So, Berto, you're vegan, right? I am a vegan. What? How do you pronounce that? Vegan. So, uh, <laughs> I thought today we would talk about the psychology of vegans. We <laughs> we would try to figure out why people are vegans, sure. why people hate vegans, and whether or not I should be a vegan. Okay. But by the way, I'm a I'm a vegan plus. What does that mean? <laughs> or a mostly vegan. It, it, it means that I am trying to be vegan and I make some exceptions. Okay. Well, I think we'll you talk know, about I it. I think there's a lot of people like that. Yeah. This is the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist, a professor, and an omnivore. Who are you, Berto? My name is Umberto Castaneda, and I sell mostly vegan beef burgers. So this was prompted by an email from patron Alexis who wrote in and said, I was wondering if you could maybe talk about the psychology of vegans. I grew up in Pittsburgh to very conservative parents. The narrative I frequently heard was that vegetarianism was silly and that vegans were just crazy and annoying. I was taught we need to, I, I was taught we need meat to be healthy and that consuming it was the natural order of things. It's our right as the dominant species. The vast majority of us rolled our eyes at PETA and continued to assume that vegetarians were constantly on their soapbox preaching down to us. So then I moved to San Francisco. Obviously, this area is very culturally different from the one I grew up in. Veganism is more widespread, and almost everyone I know restricts their meat intake to some extent. Every so often, though, I find myself feeling defensive when another one of my friends turns to vegetarian ism or the vegetarian lifestyle or talks about the morality of going vegan i'm wondering if you could discuss further why this might be why are people so quick to hate on vegans i'm also curious about the psychology of becoming a vegetarian or a vegan so let's get into it berto what do you say oh yeah i mean this is a topic near and dear to my heart yeah uh both literally and figuratively and medically <laughs> yeah so I too, I mean, I grew up in Colombia. Colombia is carnivorous. C Colombia and carnivorous both start with C. Right. We were just in Colombia, you and I, and we were in Bogota. And for your grandma's 90th birthday party, uh, there was a banquet and lots of food. Right. And the main thing that I ate was just a plate full of like 20 different kinds of meat. Meats. Yeah. yeah. You had ribs and sausage and blood sausage yeah. and pork and bacon and right. steak and uh, other forms of, of maybe lamb or something. Like it was just a plate full of different barbecued That's right. meats. That's right. And it's called asado. Okay. And I pretty 95% of what I shoved in my pie hole was, was meat at, at that dinner. So you could get your hemoglobin all excited. Yeah. So, um, so then you had to change from that to what? Yeah. So, so what happened, by the way, I also, uh, thought for most of my life that for, I, I sort of thought vegetarians and vegans, first of all, I didn't know the difference, right? I just like vegetarians, whatever. I just thought they're so annoying. Like just the thought of it is so annoying. I feel like you, when I first met you 10 some odd years ago, you were kind of like that. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I just thought like, oh, vegetarian, vegans, whatever, who cares? And I, I just grouped that in together with like just wacky new age theories or something. I also thought that it wasn't real, meaning I thought no one can really be a vegetarian because you can't get protein. So like you die. Like, so, you know, people might say they're vegetarians, but they'll, they'll be hungry and then they'll just need to eat some meat. Right. That was honestly what I thought. And I didn't think of it uh, like all the time or anything. It's just if the topic ever came up, if I ever went to a restaurant and there was anything like vegetarian, I never even looked at it or it never even registered with me. Well, two years ago, two, two and a half years ago, I went to the doctor and it was like a, you know, routine checkup kind of thing, but she drew blood and, um, I got my results back and everything was bad. Like everything was on the, on the red, like saturated fat, uh, triglycerides, cholesterol, blood pressure, like you name it, it was, it was bad. Oh. And I was like, 
holy macamole. Like, this is not good. Yeah, that, that'll that tap into your hypogondriasis real fast. Yeah, really fast. Because now there's like a page full of red. Yeah. <laughs> That's not something that looks like a worm that came out of your butt. No, it looks like red marker. That's like a real scientific <laughs> marker of, of unhealth. Yeah. And then she was like, well, oh, whoops, it was upside down. It's it's even worse than we thought. <laughs> no, um, so I You're got, a woman. You're a woman. So I got really concerned and I thought, all right. I because in my mind I thought well I exercise you know sure I indulge every now and then I'll go to a restaurant did or you something. eat a lot of meat back then I, I just ate and <laughs> I just ate and I would go out to restaurants mostly mostly yeah but here's the the thing that I didn't realize if you had asked me well Berto do you eat healthy I would have said yeah pretty healthy and you're like okay tell me what you eat i'm like well first of all i've been eating organic since the late 90s when the whole mad cow stuff started so like at least starting in the early 2000s i started like looking for more organic options on everything so whenever i get a burger it's an organic patty yeah and the I fries remember. are organic and the oil is organic well it wasn't that long ago <laughs> that you kept dragging me to that burger place in eight Red, ounce in no in redmond or, oh yeah 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 right that what's that one called? Um, well, there's a few. There's uh, the Lunchbox Laboratory. There's no, the the other one. Uh, <sighs> it's it, like it's one of those Lunchbox yeah. Lab kind of places. But uh, your your phone your your I'm getting your, Twitter notifications. Do you know that I started a Twitter account by the way? Psycho Birdo. Psycho Birdo. And are people with a zero? Are people uh, tweeting? At no, you? no one. Freaking, I mean, was that what you just got? Or well, yeah, that are, might. Are you be getting some, notifications of other people tweeting? Uh, I didn't check, but it might have been other people. Okay. But but like people are like, oh, you should totally start a Twitter, and then I did, and then some people followed me, and they don't freaking pay attention when I tweet. So I'm gonna uh, keep tweeting, or t- tweeting. Yeah. Until someone says, "Attaboy." <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Well. All right. So yeah, you were. Yeah. So you know, I that well, was. Well, let me, me let me ask you. Are so you went vegan. Uh, well, not immediately. Oh. So, so what happened was I said, all right, I clearly think that I'm eating healthy, but it must be that I'm really not because I do exercise, like not enough probably, but I do exercise. So, and then I started reading and watching videos and doing research and I thought, all right. Oh, by the way, years and years ago, I was a proponent of the zone, uh, you know, the zone uh, diet where you eat you know, an, a kind of an equal amount of, of protein and carbs and some healthy mono unsaturated fats. And I still think, you know, that that's not bad, but the, the zone definitely had animal protein in the mix, you know. All right. So I started doing research and at first I looked into paleo, you know, the paleo diet and uh, I thought, okay, this is good. But then I found a lot of data about some, some long-term concerns. And what I was trying to go for wasn't how do I lose weight quickly or how do I get buff quickly? I was trying to find a, a way to eat that could last me for the rest of my life and that I that would help me live longer, uh, you know, uh, in regards to my health. With regards to cholesterol? It just overall, that would just like improve my health, all those numbers that were in the red. Which were mostly the cholesterol numbers? It was, it was the, well, cholesterol, but also triglycerides and also my blood pressure. And, and even my, my thyroid was starting to act up a little bit. Um, and, and your so, diet had something to do with that? Everything, everything was correlated. What did your physician tell you to do? She's, she definitely is like, you need to change your diet and you need to, to what? Exer- uh, well, she had some recommendations and things like that. Like but what? you know how physicians can't tell you, like they can't tell you, here's, I'm going to give you the exact thing you need to eat, right? So it's more like she, she like referred me to some <clears throat> things to read. She said, if you want to consult, I can refer you to a nutritionist, that kind of stuff. Right. She didn't give you any guideline. She, she did, did, of what course. What she said. Well, you know, she said the usual, right? Eat, eat uh, more, uh, Veg- less saturated fats. Eat your fruits and vegetables. Uh, you know, eat lean meats. Eat, uh, you know, those kinds of things, right? Um, exercise more. <clears throat> yeah, the usual. But I've heard that all my life. That was nothing new. But like, I needed to look deeper. Like, what, what am I doing wrong here? Um, and then eventually, well, I, just, I just want to point out and I, you know, yeah. I, 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 and I'm curious, I, I'm guessing this has worked, otherwise you wouldn't be persisting with it. But along those lines, there are, uh, there was a possibility, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. that you just would have followed her advice as another option, not, oh, not as a better option. Yeah. That could have worked. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I could, I could have done paleo or keto or no, just no, no, oh, oh, no, no diet, just 
your diet that you sure. were doing at the time, just increase the vegetables and decrease the saturated fats. Right. You can get rid Eat out less, all that stuff, yeah. Well, or eat out without eating super fatty, just trying Which to reduce is, your animal fats, yeah. you know? Well, like, not, she didn't say that, right? She's just, well, I guess animal fats meant, are saturated. Lean meat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, but, and less know, coconut like, is saturated. You know? Right. So, yeah. you know, if you, you can follow yeah. some pretty simple guidelines right. and eat out too, depending right. on the restaurant's disclosures right. and this kind of thing and practices. But. Right. The, the problem is I thought I was already doing that. You know, like I was like, I don't know. That's what I do. Were you though? Well, as I found out, no. Yeah. But I didn't find that out because you, you, you were similar to me at now Yeah. in that you would just eat whatever I, I, I remember we yeah. ate out a lot yeah, yeah. and we had no reservations, no reservations, literally yeah. and figuratively. <laughs> yeah. And I think that, um, some of the stuff we would eat, we would try to, I mean, it, I think the way you put it was accurate in that you had certain guidelines that you followed that you thought were quote unquote healthy. Yeah. Like, oh, it's Japanese food. It's yeah, like, right. It Japanese food is healthy, right? right. It's like not necessarily. Ramen? Great. Not necessarily. Well, everything's right? great. Yeah. And, or this restaurant looks clean. Like, for example, I had never again eaten at fast food joints. Right. I didn't I don't. Eat, I don't eat a McDonald's. Right. I don't eat Burger King. Therefore, I'm healthy. Right. Yeah. And I eat organic. Yeah. Well, and so if you had asked me, and do you eat veggies? I would like, yeah. Then you're like, well, what, what veggies do you eat? I'm like, I don't know. Like. You know, veggies. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, there's there's a couple onions. Like, there's a couple. Yeah, like, there's onions, tomatoes in my burger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. When I finally, what I finally did after a lot of research is I looked at, you know, what, what do people eat in Okinawa in the blue zones? You know, Okinawa, Sardinia, the, the Adventists and, and all these things. I watched a hundred hours on on videos on YouTube. But I finally found a channel that, that wasn't just like, here's my opinion, man. It's a channel that... Um, it's called, and at first this could put you off, it's called Nutrition Facts. So you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it's also the guy that does it. He sat, his voice is really funny sounding. So when I first came across him was that he did a talk. Uh, they, someone had recorded him doing a talk at Google and posted it on YouTube. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I listened to that talk and it was like, whoa, this guy sounds really freaking annoying, but He's making some sense. And then I started following his channel. And what he does is he reviews all the published, peer-reviewed like literature, you know, the scientific journals, the, the experiments that they publish. And then he summarizes and puts videos summarizing conclusions from meta studies, from specific studies. And then he'll revise his uh, recommendations over time based on new studies and all these things. So it's not just some guy being like, I think you should blah because I think, right? Great. And that's where I started realizing, okay, there's a lot of speculation on a lot of different data and, and none of this is like 100%, but there is information that seems to point towards animal fats and animal proteins leading to inflammation, leading to uh, potential, leading to increase in, in, in your insulin, therefore potential di pre-diabetes or diabetes. Uh, some roles or effects with uh, cancers and Alzheimer's and all other degenerative diseases over time. So what I looked at is that plus what the diets in the, where the people live the longest. And if you draw little Venn diagrams, the things that seemed to be very common were vegetables, beans, very low amounts of hardcore protein and certainly low amounts of saturated fats. So I thought, okay. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try this crazy vegan thing. Oh, because I also realized, oh, you can totally get protein. I was wrong about that. You can absolutely get protein. And, and then you have to be wary, wary of certain things like um, because we wash our thing, our, our food nowadays and we don't eat straight from the ground and all these things. We don't get a lot of bacteria. And so therefore we don't get a lot of B12 and B12 comes from bacteria and animal protein, ha animal food has, a, has enough B12 for us, although not always enough. So you got to supplement your, your B, especially your B12. You still got to get enough vitamin D. And so they recommend the best is sun, right? But, but uh, you know, so I take a vitamin D supplement because in this Pacific Northwest region, I have to anyways. Things like that. Uh, you Getting a little bit of omega is, is tricky because, you know, fish is great, but depending on the fish, you might get too much mercury. So you got to be smart. There's omega and algae. There's also krill, which is not exactly vegan, but it's lower on the food chain. So there's a lot of things you can research. I started doing vegan for 
from like Mar uh, no sorry from June to October of that year I went hardcore and I just what like, year was that two years uh, two years ago yeah and I just went hardcore in that time frame first of all I lost um I lost 25 pounds I think wow and when I went back to the doctor in October and they did the blood test everything was back in the green yeah even my t4 or t3 value which was the pre-thyroid uh, marker that one was back in the normal range Great. which by the way that that might be related to the fact that uh i might have hashimoto's which is something where uh, it's sort of like an autoimmune trigger and certain things can trigger that like if you have allergies to certain nutrients like wheat or, or other things so by eating healthier and 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 changing my diet, that had an effect, but it doesn't mean that that was just because of fats or something. Now, here's the kicker. When I finally started doing this, I looked and I'm like, oh, that's what eating veggies is like. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't eat veggies. Right. Then I started eating veggies and I'm like, oh, leafy greens and like, yeah. And like plants and things, uh, like mushrooms, a, like even. a full big bowl right. of vegetables. Right. And I started liking it. It took a little bit, but then I started liking it. And then beans, I never used to eat beans, never. And then I, I ate as a kid, but never as an adult beans. When am I going to order a plate of beans? Maybe <laughs> refried beans at most. And then I started eating beans. And, and I was like, wow, this is great. So slowly but surely I got in that. Now, when that winter hit, it was a little challenging because with the holidays and all these things, I started making exceptions. I started exercising less. I still kept to like not eating pork, chicken, beef, but I, 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 I still made more exceptions and a lot of cheese. I would eat at an Indian restaurant a lot. So oh, so you went full no cheese. I, I first I did, yeah. And then I sort of started cheating again. That's hard, man. No it, cheese. Right. For me, I love cheese. Well, that and so many things have cheese right. in it, especially a vegetarian thing. Right. Like, so, che like cheese pizza. For oh, example. totally. So over time where I've landed, and I'm now actually starting to, it's taken me a while, but I'm starting to find my sweet spot. Uh First of all, it's easy to be vegan and still be very unhealthy because you could, for example, eat potato chips and candy and it's all vegan, right? Right. So sugars, lots of salt, grease, still bad, right? even though it's vegan. Um, I actually no longer crave a lot of things that I used to crave, like eggs. I used to love eggs. I would eat eggs every morning. When we were in Colombia, I had them because my grandma cooks them, but it was sort of like every day I would like, like, okay. And, I, and I'd say like, well, don't give me as many eggs as normal. Give me a little less eggs, a uh, fewer eggs. And now like on a regular basis throughout the year, I barely ever eat eggs. Uh, every now and then you're like at a restaurant, they make like a fried rice what and it's got eat? eggs. Or something. So what I do is all my protein mostly comes from beans. But can you describe it? Oh yeah. So like, here's a typical lunch, a bed of greens that are mostly arugula and some mixed colorful greens. Um, from where? Uh, oh, this is like a salad bar. Like at Whole Foods? Yeah, let's say. Yeah, different place. But let's say it's Whole Foods salad bar. So a, a little bed of about half of a bowl filled with the greens. So it looks like a lot of food, but it's it's not a lot because it's greens, yeah. right? Then I add uh, like a few peppers, uh, like red peppers and some tomatoes. Um, I add... Like, be like cherry tomatoes? Like cherry tomatoes. Then I add, uh, if they have artichokes, I grab a couple of artichokes because they're, they're good in protein and fiber. And then I grab beans. Ideal beans are, the best are lentils. Lentils are super high in antioxidants, super high in protein, all these things. They don't usually have lentils at a lot of places. So yeah. I'll do like they green have peas like, what, and red beet, kidney lima beans. Lima and, yeah. and garbanzo. Yeah, green peas are good too. But like, uh, so I grab like some green peas and maybe like garbanzo. Garbanzo is actually really good too. Yeah. And, and uh, or kidney beans. And then uh, I'll grab some nuts. Uh, and if the guy doesn't mind, we'll go out on a date. But other than that, I'll, I'll put some like uh, walnuts or something like that. Um, ideal nuts for me are macadamia and Brazil nuts. Mm. Macadamia is monounsaturated. Brazil nuts have a lot of selenium, which I need in my diet. Wow. Um, and then I'll do something like seaweed. Like, uh, like So this is all in the same bowl? Yeah, yeah, some seaweed. And I don't add any oil. Like dried seaweed? Yeah, dried seaweed. Uh, yeah. Like flakes. Like on the, the flakes, yeah. The uh, nigiri or uh, nori or something. Like nori. That. Nori. Um, I don't add any dressings. So I don't add oil. I don't add... I might add a teeny bit of lemon or vinegar, but I don't want to make it too like acid because it burns my mouth a little bit. So then what do you do? And then I just like add like pep red pepper flakes, like Oh spicy. my God, dry? 
Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, but it gets wet because of the tomatoes and all the other stuff. And it's oh. oh, and I might add a little fruit like blueberries or some 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 purp. Anything purple is generally amazing because it's got the most antioxidants. I mean, I guess the beans are kind of wet. Yeah. So I, I man, I I mean, what you're describing to me is a similar salad that I would get all the time when I lived down by Whole Foods. Uh-huh. And I just got one from Central Market the other day. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love that too. Just a big bowl. It's very similar to that. So I would have never... But, I would, but I would always put like, a dressing on right. it. Like, if I'm being healthy, it's just oil and vinegar. Sure. Well, is, I that, is that bad? Is that bad? It's not bad. It's just oil, oil, all oils are refined, right? Like, so... Um, and all oils raise your... your um, after you eat a meal with oil, your... your uh, what do you call it? Your... Um, your fats go up, your, your fat content in your blood cells goes up and, and all these things. And so um, if you're trying to be like ultra healthy, you eat olives and walnuts and things like that, you know, yeah. avocado. Mm. But uh, so I'm not saying I don't eat fats. I do try to get fats from like the whole, pl- the whole food. So right. like I'll eat a lot. Uh, and the one challenge with olives is a lot of times they're in brine and it's got a lot of salt. So like my ideal would be like some avocado slices. Um, <clears throat> I used to, I would have never in a million years, if you're like, hey, Bardo, here's the, here's your lunch, I would have been like, oh my God, that's ridiculous. I'm not eating that. Not only that, I, I would have thought it was impossible to eat such a large bowl because it looks so big. There's so much there. <laughs> but in the end, you're actually eating way less than you would have normally eaten right. because a lot of it is, is air <laughs> and <Yeah>. water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, I get more fiber than I ever used to get. Yeah. I get way more minerals it and must vitamins. must just fly out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially because I add a lot of spice. That's the one thing I do add a lot of spicy pepper. Oh. Well, anyways, that's my ideal food. Flies out and it's hot. Yeah. Now, where I, I start making exceptions. Fast and furious. The fast and the furious. The plus in my vegan is that, okay, I, I do eat a little fish every now and then. Fast and furious number two. Numero dos. <laughs> so I do eat a little fish every now and then. Um, if I go to a restaurant and they have a good fish, I might order that. You know, because of the health. I love fish. That's the one I do miss a bit. Huh. I do love fish. But you've, but it is, depending on the preparation, more healthy than like a steak. Well, in the short term, yes, because it's got better fats and all that stuff. It turns out that in the studies, a salmon, which I love salmon, it raises uh, your insulin as uh, more than some, like even beef in some cases. Huh. And so a. Am I saying that like in the short term, you're better off not eating beef and studying eating salmon? Yeah, probably. Salmon doesn't have a lot of mercury. It's really great lean protein. It's got omega-3s. You know, it's, it's, it's an awesome choice for someone eating animal protein, you know? Well, maybe it's just like the amount of salmon that people Absolutely. Eat. Like Okinawa, the, the centenarians, they eat fish. They just don't eat as much as you would think. They eat a little fish. Right. Most of their calories came from purple sweet potatoes. And then they would eat tons of seaweed and beans and, and veg, vegetables. They would eat like bitter melon, eat some fruit, uh, not, no sugar, like no refined stuff, right? Uh, no oils, nothing. Mm. And they would eat a little fish. And then in special occasions, they would cook a whole pork and eat like the whole thing. But they would boil the pork too, like the pork meat. Anyways, I'm getting off track. Point being, that's my current thing is I'm a vegan plus. I make some exceptions. And the people that want to tease me, tease me about that. <laughs> tease you how? Oh, I, I have a friend and she's like, you're not really vegan. What are you doing then? That's got cheese right there. I'm like, I know I'm a vegan plus. She's like, well, you're not a vegan then. I'm like, all right. <laughs> well, let me ask you about that. Like, how, why does there even have to be a label or like a, right? do you know what I mean? That's my feeling. My feeling is like, I try to eat quote unquote vegan. That's my thing. I try to eat vegan. Well, mostly like in 90% of the time I eat vegan. Can't, I mean, to me, cause to others, they're like, well, if you're going to, if you're going to call yourself a vegan, you right. have to follow the rules. And I don't, right. And that's why I don't really call myself that. I, I, if someone's like, what are you? I'm like, I'm a person, I guess. Yeah. But if they're like, what do you eat? I'm like, oh, I, I eat like 90% vegan, 95% vegan. Yeah. And what do you mean? 95%? What's the other 5%? Well, that's my vegan plus. It is weird though, because I, I I, I hadn't really thought about it till just now that like for me, for example, there are times when I eat, I wouldn't say I never eat vegan, but I eat vegetarian, for sure. example. 
but I don't call myself a vegetarian. No. And, and there's also different purposes. Like I didn't start on this journey from the perspective of I will not harm an animal. So I can't, it was someone that's in that perspective and I'm not making fun of it. I actually, I, I, the reason I ate organic in the first place was I'm very much against farming, like, uh, you know, bulk industrialized farming of animals, right? I think that's a horrible practice, both health wise and just humanitarian wise. Uh, I also actually have come to learn over the last couple of years that even organic practices, uh, there there's a lot of ugliness when it comes to killing and yeah and, i mean and, the, um, the label of organic it, it, once you actually to, to the average consumer the yeah. label organic means way healthier for right, example right. like doesn't have quote-unquote toxins right but the label is it's to be officially organic mm -hmm. it just has to follow this yeah. this certain guideline mm -hmm. right. and to the average consumer, if you actually explain that to them, right. they would they would be like, "That's all it means." Right. Well, and, it's like, and, and and it also means that you could do all these other horrible things. Of course. So you could eat a daily diet of organic bonbons that have organic sugar, organic fat, and organic thing, and you'll probably die in a few months. You know. Well, that and the there can still be extremely harmful things. Yes. Yeah, right. To you, right. that are on the quote unquote right. organic lettuce. Right. You know, there can be uh, the the non organic lettuce can actually, depending on the practice, because it's just this yeah. very broad label. Right. And you uh, can still have E. coli, you can still have any number of things. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so to that point, it's, it's not, I didn't start from that perspective, but I have grown to learn that, okay, farming animals and like killing them, there's something. And then I've also learned that. Uh, it has an impact, a negative impact to the environment to have, you know, billions of, of animals feeding from grass and all these things. That said, because I am not on the side of, like, I didn't start this, nor have I fully moved over to a, I will never kill or harm a single hair on any animal, right? Like, that's not my thing. Therefore, I, I don't feel like I can't make an exception in certain contexts. Whereas some, and again, I'm not making fun of that, but some folk actually come from that perspective. And so to them, it would be horrific to put even a single bite of chicken in their mouth because they're like, I've tasted a dead animal, whatever. Right. Sure. And so I'm not, I'm not on that camp. Therefore, if you, if you invite me to dinner and I never let you know my preferences and you made a dinner that had whatever, I'll probably eat it. I, I might eat less of the protein, but yeah, well, let's get into the statistics and into some research. Cause I've read a number of uh, studies about, the personality of someone with uh, who is a vegetarian or vegan. And so, but first let's take a break. What do you say? Let's do it. Okay. We're back from the break. Um, so let's go over just some of the, uh, some of the types of people here. So first you have vegetarians. These are people who don't eat animals. Like they don't eat fish or pork or beef or anything. And you have vegans who... Oh, but they do eat animal products like... Um, like cheese. Cheese and yeah. milk I'm and just saying eggs. what they don't eat. Yeah. Vegans uh, don't eat uh, fo any food derived from animals. So right. meat, eggs, cheese, honey. Um, and then you got pescatarians who are a vegetarian who eats fish. Then you got like ovo ve vegans and lacto vegans and, and omnivores who eat animals and plants. That's right. So in the U.S., Berto, how many percentage-wise of people in the United States are vegetarian? What do you think? Oh, uh, that's a... I'm going to go with 30%. <laughs> <laughs> Way high. Okay, so it's le less. So less. why do you think you think it's so high? I mean, I'm talking vegetarian. Yeah, you know, vegetarians. Like, yeah. Oh, I've just seen the trend over the last uh, decade. Like. Yeah. Almost every restaurant, even freaking McDonald's, has vegetarian options. Sure. Uh, 7%. Whoa, that's really low. Vegan. I guess 2%. <laughs> yeah, 3%. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I find it, I find it hilarious because if, if you would have asked me how, what percentage of people are vegetarian, I don't, I don't know what I would have said, but definitely not 30%. Oh, you asked about the U.S. as well. And I live in an area that is probably way overrepresented on the vegetarian and vegan. Well, we'll get into that in a second. Yeah. But 
I, I still suspect that even if you just yeah. did like sure. this greater Seattle area, it's it's probably 15% or I don't know, 10%. Anyway. Um, and the other thing here is that I find it sort of bothersome in terms of like these labels that get thrown around like, oh, I'm a vegetarian and and you're not, you know, right. you call yourself a vegetarian or you call right. yourself vegan, but I see cheese there. Right. And this sort of like silliness Calm around down. that, you know, it's just like, so one of the, th one of the stats that I looked up was that everyone uh, on average in the United States has cut back on their meat consumption over the past 15 years. Oh, wow. Uh, to a great extent. The U S for example, uh, they cut, the United States cut their beef consumption by 19% Whoa. over the past 13 years. Um, maybe more by now because this is 2014 numbers. And so this is per capita and total, like wow. have both have reduced. So, you know, everyone is eating less meat than they used to be. Hmm. Um, that is impressive. Yeah. Or interesting. Uh, people are eating more vegetables or, um, you know probably due to health concerns, I'm guessing. I mean, when I think back to the 1970s and 1980s when I grew up in the United States, yeah. um, every meal was centered around meat. And particularly among white Americans, you know, right. me being Japanese American, uh, there was a different sentiment around what dinner constituted. Sure. Like a lot of rice, for yeah. example. So you could have, so, so my mom could make spaghetti with sauce but no meat on it and put it over a bed of rice and that was dinner and i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't notice that there wasn't meat in it for example sure. but i would go to my white friends houses and you would have the half the plate would be some meat product <laughs> right you know what right, i mean right. you'd have there'd always be meat and then a veggie which is usually like corn you know, mm. and then like potatoes. So got you, you got to have your starch, your meat and your veg. <laughs> you know I mean? Which, which is interesting because corn's hard to digest for humans. Yeah. Uh, potato actually is great, except I'm sure it was doused with oils and salt and stuff. Totally. And then the meat. I, I grew up by the way, with every single night, it was a hand sized portion of chicken, like a chicken breast, uh, rice, and I did have some sort of pea or there was usually some sort of grain, never fruit, never veggies. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, cause that was the definition of if you could afford it, you know, right. for, for poor people, they couldn't afford meat. You know, right. they, they, they had to eat beans. Right. Beans was the food of hobos, you know what I mean? Right. And so if you had money and you could afford it, then that's, that was that meant prosperity because in uh -huh. the past there was so little of it that you were so happy to get it. Yeah, so like you know, pork chops, ham, sausage, hamburgers, hot dogs, spam in my house, meatloaf, uh, Salisbury steak in my house. <laughs> Japanese people, uh, they they love a good hamburger patty just by itself with like show with a um, soy sauce on it. I see. And it would always drive me crazy. Cause I would, I was always like, we're so close to a hamburger. <laughs> like if you just give me two pieces <laughs> of bread, this is a hamburger, but, <laughs> but now I'm eating Salisbury steak. This is awful. Anyway. So, uh, so, and vegetarianism, veganism is, is on the rise, uh, pretty quickly. And also just cutting back on, on eating meat. According to PETA, the most vegan-friendly cities, which, you know... Isn't they, that the guy in the Hunger Games? Yeah, PETA. Uh, what do you think? Uh, top 10 cities. Top 10 most... Most vegan-friendly cities. Oh, okay. Well, sure. Cities. Uh, Portland. That's number one. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Seattle. <laughs> uh, number nine. Oh, number nine? Um, okay, I'm running out of things I know. Uh, oh, I know. San Francisco. Uh, no. No? Strangely. Okay. Um, <clears throat> mm. <clears throat> vegan cities. I can't even think of it. Oh, call it, uh, Boulder. No. What? Boulder? Boulder? Boulder is meat country. No, no, no. Boulder. I've been to Boulder. It's hippie country. Yeah, but it's in the middle of like, um, uh, just a lot of it. Anyway. Okay. It's not on the list. All right. Oh man. I don't even know then. Like, uh. Well, you got to go LA. Oh, okay, LA. Yeah, totally. I wouldn't have thought that. Why? 
Oh, LA is where this Hollywood, but LA is where this whole thing began. I mean, oh, like, oh, I see the whole culture sure. of veganism. I, I would, I would assume. It's just there's so much Latin population there, and I so mean, much... it's just associated with a yeah. lot of different things today. Okay, okay, but, but, you know. Okay, I'll give you. <laughs> it's number, it's number two. <laughs> All right, uh, New York City. New York City. You underestimate New York. The number of vegans in Greenwich. Yeah, I mean, there, there is a huge component of progressive politics that's true. liberal you know that's new true. agey like you don't think of new york city as like being in that direction right but, I, I guess but I, there's a lot of young people yeah. in new york city now who are fully into that stuff i i picture new york city and i picture wall street hot shots eating steaks at lunch <laughs> yeah well what you need to think now is like brooklyn is just essentially like yeah more liberal than Seattle in some ways. Do you I know see. what I mean? Um, Detroit. What? No way. Number four. That's Na crazy. Nashville. Oh, no, 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 no. That, I, no. Impossible. Uh, I've been to Nashville. It's a, it's a nice place, and it kind of defies expectations in really? some ways. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have put it on a vegan-friendly place. What's next? Place. Houston? Uh, San Diego. So okay, I could that see makes that. Sense. Yeah, uh, Honolulu. Yes, I could definitely see that one. Austin. What? Austin is the Seattle. Oh, that is the Seattle of Texas. Yeah, but they have so much barbecue in Austin. Uh, well, in in <clears throat> Texas, true. Uh, yeah, but Austin has famous barbecue joints. Totally, uh, and Richmond, Virginia, which is also. Uh, well, I wouldn't have guessed that. Also either. has its liberal. I think the fan they call it. The there's like a neighborhood called the fan that oh, yeah. when I was there felt sort of liberal anyway uh what about by country the most vegan countries the well no uh percentage vegetarian so this is actual like this isn't just some survey this is actually like the percentage okay. of people who are vegetarian in that country i have the top 16 oh okay 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 all right all right all right india yep number one at 35 percent okay because religion and culture yeah Okay, uh, I'm going to go with Indonesia. No. No. Why'd you say Indonesia? I don't know. I just, it's another <laughs> country. With... I think this list is going to surprise you too. Okay, okay. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go with like Norway. No. Uh, Sweden is 10 at 10%. Okay, Sweden. Hmm. All right, Japan is not. No. No. But... But China. No. No? Okay. Oh, God, no. No, okay. No, you're right. They, they eat everything, all the insects and stuff. Yeah. They're like Colombia, like yeah. lots of meats. Okay. And veggies and veggies. Oh, oh, Africa, of course. Uh, um, let's say Egypt. No. No, not Egypt. Um, but some of those countries have to be like, mm, like Zimbabwe. No. Or Congo. No, nope. gosh there's, damn it! There's no. There's is there no African country on there? No African country. Really? Gosh yeah. darn it! Fine. Uh, Portugal? No, impossible. Right. Why am I kidding? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Where do you think the United States is? <sighs> Not on the list. It is. It is. It's number sixteen. Oh, okay. At seven percent. Okay, I'm stumped, man. What are the top? Uh, number two is Mexico. No way. Nineteen percent. Vegetarian? That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, Brazil, number three. Oh no, that's impossible. What about all those Brazil steakhouses? Fourteen. I know that. When, so when I went to Colombia, yeah, I, I did a stopover for a couple of days in Denver, uh -huh. and I noticed they had a, a fugo de chao. Yeah, yeah, that one where they come around with a stick with the pincers and they. Isn't that Brazilian? Yeah, that is absolutely Brazilian. Um, God, did I eat so much meat? I, f I felt pregnant, like I was going <laughs> to give birth to a meat baby, and I did. <laughs> 24 hours later um fast and furious it was it wasn't fast and furious. Meat. it was a meat byproduct baby <laughs> <laughs> uh taiwan number four 14 percent switzerland 14 percent israel australia new zealand okay israel israel makes sense belgium sweden germany canada austria poland okay italy 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 what united states yeah no Greece? No Greece. Uh, percentage vegans. So United States is number eight at three at three percent. Are you kidding me? Uh, no. United States is number eight. Yeah. Uh, um, well, I'll just give you these ones because it's a similar list. India, 27%. Mexico, 
Number two, nine percent. Nine percent of Mexicans are vegans. That is crazy. Yeah. Uh, Poland, Israel, Sweden, Brazil, Switzerland, United States, and Japan is also at three percent. Uh, which you know, is, it's interesting that Japan didn't feature in the vegetarian list, but it, it, they did. But that's not that surprising because they don't eat a lot of cheese, do they? Um, they've started to. Yeah, but it's not like a traditional. No. Yeah. Well, they do have kind of this French influence. Okay. Like their bread there is like gourmet bread. Okay. Like when they sell bread, it's just like pristine. Mm loaves of oh, bread you know what i mean hungry. like this these french anyway all right so let me just give you my thesis maybe some people are thinking i might be hostile to vegans because <laughs> i'm not exactly um super on board with everything but um would the world be a better place if everyone were vegan uh the answer is yes it's undoubtable you know there are many different things that the meat the basically the industry of meat eating is bad in a number of ways, economically, health-wise, environmentally. But at the same time, the world would be a better place with, without alcohol, for example. Yeah. Like if you asked me, should we, should everyone not drink alcohol right. or should we get rid of alcohol? Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, yeah. on some level, alcohol gives people <laughs> like happiness and yeah. like da, 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 da. And so, so in the same way, we don't need to eat meat, yeah. but people like it. It, it right. tastes good, and, and they like and it's culture and blah blah blah. Right. So, which is, which is by the way, where uh, I know this would be so hard to do, but th in theory, you would imagine a taxation system where, via taxes, you would incentivize the right consumption. Right, but, that but that's not the case. We we actually work. subsidize the meat industry. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'll get more into that in a second. Um, but yeah, uh, absolutely, the world would be a better place. And honestly, if I could flip a switch or something and just say like, okay, you know, there are 50% of the world is vegan. Uh, I, would, I would flip that switch. Or 50% of the people who are considering vegan now can be vegan in an economically easy way without right. being oppressed and can get enough, you know, of the nutrition new nutrients they need and all that kind of stuff i would do that for sure yeah. um and the world would become in a lot of ways a much better place to live and much more sustainable more healthy uh, more just in a lot of ways and um, i would the future would look not as grim it would right. still be pretty grim because that's the point is like if we're trying to fix our environmental problems uh the the meat industry is definitely something to look at, but it's right. just one of the things. Because right, right. and even if we did, we can't stop with just that, right? <clears throat> um, and also the production of plant food calories also is incredibly polluting to the environment. Yeah. I mean all all those uh, machines and trucks and yep. packaging and and pesticides and um, and uh, fertilizer is right. like just awful to the to the world and the environment and other animals and stuff it's you know it's there's all sorts of things that are happening among, in, in among general, the, the general practices right in general feeding seven billion plus humans is just not easy on the environment <laughs> when you have systems that are not well thought out one yeah. and two um you don't have politicians that care to change it. You know, like like one of the things is eventually we'll probably be looking at a situation where we would probably benefit by eating insects because <laughs> they're easy to yeah. um, uh, to make. <laughs> yeah. And the environmental impact is much the 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 environmental impact to actual protein, mm -hmm. uh, you know, amount is much more favorable and. And uh, bug protein is the same as any other kind of protein, or, right. you know, it could be made similar. And so, right. anyway, my point is, is that uh, politicians are never going to fight for that. <laughs> you right. know, like, no, no, no politician is going to be like, I stand for us Crickets. eating, us eating more bugs, you know, it's yeah. just because, you know, no, no one can get elected with stuff like that. But anyway. Uh, but by the way, uh, did you see that movie Snowpiercer? Yeah. 
So one of the one of the many things that bugged me about that movie, no pun intended. Actually, I I will intend the pun. Is that one of the oh spoiler alert everyone if you haven't seen it I'm about to spoil something it's a dumb movie anyway. at one at one of the trains that uh, one of the cars he arrives in one of the mini big reveals is oh, the stuff they're feeding us is bugs yeah. and at that moment in the movie I'm like uh, yeah duh what's the problem <laughs> yeah I mean the whole premise of the movie is the the everything outside of this train the world outside of this train has had some kind of massive disaster right. and there's no food supply. Right. And so the, so the, the evil bosses on this train are feeding these, <laughs> the, the lower classes with, with bugs. It's yeah. a dumb movie. Yeah. I don't understand why people like that people movie. People freaked out. Yeah. Um, it was a similar thing with old boy. Did you ever see the Korean old boy? Uh, a long time ago. Yeah. Did you like it? I think I did, but oh, I haven't God. seen it in a while. I could, I mean, the whole time I just like, I was fast forwarding. Everyone, scenes. it's a classic for a lot of people. I don't understand it. Yeah. I'm like, there are Asian movies that are, uh, that I love that yeah. I know aren't that great. Like a lot of John Woo movies. Right. Uh, you did know, you see the remake of Old Boy? I tried to and I okay. got bored and like, I was just like. I haven't seen that one. I just like, okay, you know, whatever. Yeah. I think Spike Lee directed it actually. Anyway. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so would the world be a better place if if there if the if everyone was vegan? Yes, um, uh, but like I said, the world would also be a better place if we didn't have alcohol, or any kind of jewelry, or if we wore the same outfit every day. I mean, how many right. clothes do you you know how many shirts do you have? You probably have you know forty shirts or something. And, Not quite. Well, thirty. I've gotten rid of a lot of clothes over the years. I've seen you wear. I can think of 20 shirts that you rotate. You know. T-shirts? Yeah. Not quite. Okay. I used to. like So I, I, this is part of my growth. Is We're I, getting off topic. Yes. <laughs> uh, the, the point is, is that uh, there's a lot of things that we do that we don't need to be doing. Yes. We, do, we don't need to be. I've traveled to Colombia yeah. with you. Neither one of us had to go to Colombia. Right. And the amount of fuel that we wasted and the time we could have spent volunteering for the poor in Seattle, like we, that was worse for right. the world. And yet we did it. So, right. you know, I, I don't know. It's just a question, you know. So, but yeah, the world would be a better place. Should everyone be vegan? Uh, the question, the questions to me are broader than that, which is, um, how can we treat animals more humanely, even if we are eating them or using them for, for milk or eggs or whatever? And, you know, you get into some real debatable morals in terms of, um, like, you have a cow that lives his or her life um, in a huge, lots of acreage yeah. and having uh, the, an, a regular domesticated cow life right uh air in her in her hair uh lots of places to eat and poop and things to entertain her <laughs> like a herd to entertain her nintendo she, she can play she can she can have uh babies at times and you know it's and then one day someone comes along and you know snake and uh before she knows it essentially boom right. she's dead and and she's and she's, you know, being processed for, right. for meat consumption, and she uh, had no idea it was coming. Right. Um, now, absolutely, someone can argue, well, so you're saying you can just walk up to a human and just kill him and eat him? <laughs> or sure. just because you feel like... Hey, that, they didn't know what was coming. <laughs> yeah. Just because you feel like that's, you know, that's okay. You well, know? not every human, just 10% of the population. Just the fat <laughs> ones. Um, you know, this one, it, you know, it, I get that. I'm an animal lover. I, I look at my cat, my dog as family members. Right. And, you know... Um, you don't tend to eat family members, not often. Right. And so, uh, so I get that argument um, for sure. And, uh, and at the same time, I also get the argument that uh, the process that I just laid out is morally acceptable um, yeah. to, to someone, you right. know. Uh, and there's no way either one can be right. It's, right. it's your belief system. There are some things that, uh, you know, 
that are undeniable, like, um, you know, uh, a five-year-old is bothering you and, or a five-year-old is an orphan and no one's loving it. And so society decides to kill it. Like, there's no argument you can make that makes that okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that, that tends towards a society that will probably end badly. But even if it ends fine, I don't care. I don't want to. I don't want to sustain a society that's like that just based on the. Yeah, you the, the you emotions. don't find that palatable, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and so uh, so anyway, my point is is that there are things that are uh, undeniable to the vast majority of humans. Right. This idea, when people really look at it, and um, and they you know mull over the scenario that I laid out. You're going to get different opinions yeah. on, on what that is. Um, the fact is, though, is that 99.99999% of animals that are being used for food uh, consumption are not anywhere close to being treated that way. Right. And so that is the problem. And so yeah. by being vegan, you're basically saying, well, sure, it'd be great if animals were treated you know, nicely, but the vast majority of them are not. Right. And by me participating in the meat culture is me basically upholding that economy, which is right. basically abusing entire species. And, you know, I don't even want to describe the shit that, <laughs> that are happening right, to right. these animals. It's just... So, b by the way, uh, part of this is that today, if we try to make a conversation or have a conversation or make a plan about, hey, everyone, let's start saving the environment. So a lot of what you hear, I definitely have heard th this kind of stuff is like, well, yeah, but A, it might be too late. Or B, what can one person do? Or C, like, how are you going to change behavior? You know, like, and if you say things like, everyone, stop eating all meats now. It's like, okay, that seems completely insurmountable. Now, at the same time, I think most people would agree that if we could somehow rewind time and tell our older human selves, not us, but our ancestors. And I, I say like rewind a thousand years. Say, hey, FYI, it's going to get really crowded and crappy in about a thousand, fifteen hundred years. So could we start having a little long term planning? Just a little bit. Like just a little conservationism. Like a little thinking about like what do we do when this forest is gone? Like that kind of stuff. Like what if what if the river's right. not always clean? Well, what that translates into, which I think is what you're getting at, or or the what I'm what I interpret that as, is a understanding of sustainability, right, and of policy, right, and you essentially engineer your society if we're going to have a capitalist, because we live in a capitalist society right. that has rules like, you know, for example, in Seattle, we just passed a law that you can't have plastic straws. Right. So it's not entirely run by capitalism, you know, yeah. uh, capitalism, the, the notion, well, I'm looking at it. Anyway, the point is, is that, but uh, we don't have absolute freedom without any barriers. Right. So capitalism with government sanctions on certain things that we decide yeah. as a society that we think are necessary because the market won't adjust in the way that we want it to. Yeah. And so uh, policy around this sort of thing, around right. uh, being smart about, um, well, let's look at this, you know? If we are going to make meat this affordable <laughs> or this kind of meat this affordable, then, and, and this sort of farming and grazing affordable, then this is what ends up happening, given what people mm -hmm. want. Um, for example, if we subsidize meat even more, then there would be more meat consumption. Right. So we subsidize meat and we, or we don't tax it enough for this sort of thing. You know, it's the same with gasoline and, right. you know, uh, electric cars and incentives, tax breaks, you know, it's all, it's all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that, that would be nice. But, uh, we absolutely can do something and we have to do something. Yeah. Not but just about meat and, but we have to do something about the whole kit and caboodle, right? And yes, even if we ended as a world, our carbon emissions, just if we just look at carbon and methane and other kinds of warming gases, um, we would still have a, we still have a runaway effect over the next, you know, number of decades oh, yeah. where it's going to get warmer anyway. Um, so it is a very dire situation, but we have to do something and, and, you know, probably, and, and plus given, like I said, the, 
need, it, the, we're probably looking at a cap of about 11, 15 billion people on the planet. And we just don't have enough land to feed them the way that we have it ratioed out today with something like, uh, I, I can't remember, some, some large percentage of the right. amount of, of farmable land is actually being used for grazing cattle. And that's just not sustainable. And right. so uh, we just don't have the space on the planet, you know? And so all those right. things, you know, have to change. But anyway, so uh, for me, this is what I'll say what I do. I, I try to reduce um, what I eat in terms of things that are bad. You know, for example, I think I said earlier, um, I think ever since... I, ever since I had the ability to control my own diet after moving out of my parents' house, um, either by accident or by design, um, when in doubt, I don't eat any meat. Not because of, I mean, mostly, I guess, because of health concerns, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not one of those people that is just like, unless, unless I, you know, I got to have my slab of meat. You know, <laughs> it's just like, I like a slab of meat just as much as anybody else does. Sure but it's not the only thing on the planet that makes me happy when I sure. eat it. You know what I mean? And so, uh, you definitely there, know people like that. <laughs> right. And so there are times when I like, I'll think about, like, I'll just think today, like I haven't eaten any meat today, but I did not by design. It's just like, I like other kinds of foods, right. you know what I mean? So, um, so there's that. The other thing is, is that when I do eat meat, when I'm, being good. <laughs> I try to buy pro animal, pro environment sure. things. Like it's more expensive. It's drastically more expensive, right. by the way. Because, it's not incentivized. <laughs> yeah, because of the way our economy works. For example, for example, uh, Mashiko is a Japanese restaurant in West Seattle uh, run by Hijimi Sato, and it is a sustainable sushi restaurant. And yeah. it's, and it's, it, 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 with my neki, it's like my number one. Wow. Japanese restaurant in the Seattle area. And, uh, and they don't have certain kinds of sushi. They don't have certain kind of sashimi. They don't have, there's certain fish that they just don't even have. Mm -hmm. It's not even on the menu because it's like, this fish is actually bad to farm for Got various it. reasons. Bad for you. So they don't make those exceptions. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so they did. So, so if you go there, you know, you're getting fish that um, there's enough to farm that the farming uh -huh. practices are not horrible that the fish itself doesn't have high levels of mercury and all this kind of yeah. stuff. Whereas all the other Japanese restaurants in Seattle, as far as I know, right. They all have tuna, they all have salmon. They all have, you know, they have, they have all the classics yeah. and, and some of those classics are not good for you. Another thing is there's a burger place in Seattle called great state burgers. There's a few of them in Seattle. It's more expensive, but they have, uh, they get beef from, uh, the scenario that I laid the out. Happy cows. Yeah, that I laid out earlier. Yeah. There's a they actually get their beef from a particular rancher mm, in nice. in Washington State, right? Whom they name by name, you uh -huh. know, and they you can actually go there and see the cows, and you know they're right. they're in this huge area and blah blah. But it's more expensive for a burger, just a regular burger. It's six six and a half dollars. So without anything else, no fries, <laughs> six and a half bucks. That's a lot right. of money. McDonald's, uh, a burger is less than a dollar. So, wow. you know what I mean? So it's like, that's, yeah, yeah. that's why, you know six what I mean? Six X. That's, that's why. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I have the privilege to do that. And, you know, so the big picture here is what we were saying earlier is we have to change the system. Yeah. Like most people can't afford a six and a half dollar burger very often. <laughs> no. And many people rely on McDonald's type of pricing, you right. know, whether it's at the grocery store or at the McDonald's so that they can just get through their day. They yeah, need right. 200, you know, they need 2,500 calories and they, how are they going to get them, you know? Right. And so they, um, you know, like your salad idea, for example, you know, oh that, my gosh, you, you get, when I would get a salad like that at Whole Foods, it was probably like 15, 20 yeah, bucks. It's not cheap. No. And, and now I could, I could be like, there are ways that you could be vegan on on the cheap but they will be first of all you won't have enough variety which is not as great right like because the more variety you have the more different minerals you're getting and stuff but still you could do it uh but then it's up to you if, like are, are you going to be okay with that daily kind of very limited right thing right and it's a massive pain in the ass you got to go to the yeah. store much more often because things go right. bad 
you have to pre-prepare. You have right. to bring it in your own Tupperware, which right. people do. Um, and yeah, it's just, but it's so much easier just to be like, oh crap, I need, I need calories. Okay. McDonald's right. drive through you know? So, so we need to change the system. We need to vote for politicians. I vote for politicians that support these ideas. There are progressive politicians in my area. Right. I subscribe to a progressive politician, you know, like publication that sort of tells me like what people are doing. But the fact is, is politicians aren't talking about this. Right. It's not, you know, Trump isn't tweeting about, you know, this sort of stuff and therefore no one's talking about it. So, um, so it's a bit demoralizing even among the voting options, mm -hmm. you know, cause I, I, I doubt very many progressive politicians are really attacking this issue. Um, right. so cause it's, it's, it's not, not a popular thing for them to do. Like right. you were saying. Right. But you know, we, if we do something about this, we can, and there, you know, Antioch, we have a master's degree, or at least we used to, where people study this very thing, policy around food and this kind of right. stuff and sustainability. And uh, there are people who know how to do this, who can say, okay, let's be practical here. Let's move our society in this direction. There's a way to make it just. There's a way to make it economically feasible. There's a way to please the farmers. There's a way to slowly transition yeah. uh, the, the market in this way. There's a way of, of uh, collaborating with other countries and da, da, da. We, we can do this. There's policies that can be made. And the, like your friends are saying, ah, what are you going to do? It's too late. There's, yeah. you know, it's never going to work. All we got to do is look to 1989 when we passed the law about CFCs to know that we can make we things can happen. We can make things happen. We, I remember yeah. when, I was in the 80, when I was in the 80s, it was a foregone conclusion that one, we were all going to die from a nuclear war. And the other one was that the ozone, the ozone. was going to be gone. Yeah. I made a, a project with a friend uh, where we drew these very, very apocalyptic posters with the spray and the spray, the gas of the spray was turning into a skull. And it, and then and then like you still the world, have it? no, I wish I did. Damn. Oh man! But absolutely, that was a big topic. Ozone, and and I remember like feeling like that's it, man. Yeah, it's, we're done for. We're done for. It's half. I can't remember. It was like half gone. There was a humongous right. hole in the ozone layer. Oh, and by the way, I love. One of the things that I love sarcastically is how people are so many people are skeptical. It's like, well, yeah, maybe the climate is changing, but why do you think humans have anything to do with it? But like, we saw that humans had something directly to do with the ozone layer. I, I'm so through with people like that. It, I, I, you know, I used to like get in arguments or even in right. my head. They're basically following a religion yeah. that doesn't have any connection to science. Yeah. And I don't have any fucking time for that no, bullshit. No. Anyway, so we banned CFCs. Yeah. And guess what happened? By government fucking policy, right. we made a change in the system, which resulted in the ozone now is healing. It, they're, they're measuring it. It's basically almost healed. And, and did that mean no one could ever, ever have hairspray again, right? No right. one's had hairspray since then. Right. So it's like we can all you got to do is sort of shift things around a little bit and maybe yeah. and there's a sacrifice. Yeah. And obviously banning C CFCs is a lot, you know, less Easier of a sacrifice now. than. Well, but know. right now our Paul is like what we're doing is the whole. OK, I haven't done my homework. And my my dad says, if I don't do my homework, I don't get to watch shows this Saturday. But right. Friday comes. I didn't do my homework. And Saturday morning comes. I still didn't do my homework. And now I'm about to watch shows. And my dad's like, guess what? No TV today. Right. And then I freak the F out. And I'm like, but, but, but. And you know what they call that? Procrastinate. Growing the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. We need to grow the fuck up. <laughs> yes. Okay. So um, the other thing here is that I just want to point out is that eating no meat doesn't mean that you're not participating in immoral systems. I've, I've already kind of gone over that. Um, there are, there is, you know, very easily arguments made that some vegan foods or some non-meat products are produced and transported and, and prepared in very unjust, unenvironmental ways. So it more, again, it's more about one, uh, trying to just be smart about all of our environmental, uh, impact and, and right. you know of all food production and it just so happens to be that meat uh on average is much more destructive but it's yeah. not the only thing that's destructive um 
so yeah, so in the perfect world, we'd have better systems for energy and food, food production. And we would have um, animal practices that were reduced animal cruelty and had less environmental damage. Okay, Berta, why are people vegan, do you think? So according to research, why are people vegan or vegetarian? Oh, okay. Um, I'd say maybe the most common reason is health. Nope. That okay. is only 14%. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me try again then. Because uh, that's what you are. See, yeah. so I love the answers. Everyone's veg vegan and everyone's doing it because of health because that's what you were doing. I assumed because I... I I thought, how do you change someone except showing them really bad results in a medical report? But, okay, how about their parents were vegan or vegetarian? Like, uh, uh, that's not really an not option. Like, it's more world. like oh, okay, okay, your fine. personal choice. Then uh, I'd say uh, humanitarian concerns, like uh, they, animal, they love animals or something. Right, so ethical and moral. Ethical and moral. It's 82%. So okay. vast majority of So I'm, I'm in the minority in that case. Right. Not that I don't value that part. That's just not how I came to it. Right. Which is interesting because I thought that was how you came to it because I've also known you to be very kind to animals. Like if a spider is right, in your house, right, right. you like pick it up and take it outside yeah. or... Um, and, and hence why... But that's why I was like, well, I'll eat organic, right? Because I don't want factory farming. I think that's horrible. And all those stories with the chickens and the things, that was the compromise I had made with myself for right. many years now. Yeah. yeah. But organic chicken farming doesn't mean that it's not harmful. Well, I don't mean just organic. I mean like, you know, I would... Like uh, Applegate Farms where like they say uh, open air chickens and oh. all these kinds of things. Oh. So not organic because that's not organic. More than organic. Organic plus plus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So most people it's for ethical and moral reasons. They lump these two reasons like harm for creatures and harm for the environment in this. So Which that, is weird because those are two different motivations. Right. It seems yeah. like it's different. But I, I, I so that's, you know, um, yeah. So I, that, some, I would be interested in seeing that split. Yeah, I got some stats here. Uh, 34% of total diet-related per capita carbon pollution. Oh, so beef. So beef beef is the worst. So if out there, if you want to do something for the environment regarding what we're talking about right now, just don't eat any beef. Because <laughs> right. beef contributes uh, by far the most carbon pollution and other kind of methane and nitrous, ox nitrous dioxide to the, the environment. 34% of all of, of total diet related per capita carbon pollution is from beef. Right. Yet the amount of calories we get from beef is, you know, much, much lower than 34%. So, it, so it's not, you know, anyway. Um, now, by the way, between uh, over the last 13 years, because we've eaten less meat, in, including beef, mainly beef, we've cut our per capita diet related climate warming pollution by 10%. Oh, Nice. Yeah. So we so because of messages and that we've done in our culture. So it has worked to some extent. It has worked, wow. but just, just by ten percent, which is great. But yeah. we need we need more like ninety percent. We need know? like six hundred percent. Okay. Uh, and also, this is just the United States. The yeah. rest of the world is consuming, like China, for example, is getting more prosperous. More beefy. And therefore, they're starting to eat more meat yeah. and more beef. Right. So, you know, we're looking at a situation. There's a, a lot more there. folks over there. Yeah. And I love that argument, too. Uh, well, why do we do anything if, the, if Chinese aren't doing anything? <laughs> well, one, when, when, when we say we need to do something, it's not just... <laughs> Lead the, by example. Well, that and also we means everyone. everyone so yeah. when I say we, I'm talking to Chinese people. I'm talking yeah. to Russians. I'm talking to United, people in the United States. Anyway, 14% um, uh, said health is the reason. Um, there's lots of claims that, like you basically said earlier on, that are being said uh, that is supported by some research, but from the sources that I have looked at, that experts that actually look at all the research themselves, p nutrition people, there's just, it's just re it, food, um, I don't know how to say it, but like food research, uh, yeah. research on food, human food consumption and the benefits of this and that is one of the most difficult things to yeah. figure out. It's because hard. you can't take humans and feed them, a, you know, put them in a biodome and feed them a certain diet for 80 years right. and see how long they live. Right. 
Because that's often what we're talking about. Yep. We're often talking about like, ooh, P, like you did. Like the yeah. whole thing was based on like... And then control against a whole host of other variables. The fact, DNA, for example. DNA, environment, depression, like everything. Right. Uh, and so somehow like their cultural, we yeah. attribute, it's so funny how we're always, oh, they're living so long. What are they eating? Right. Instead of like, well, that's why what's it, their lifestyle? How about right. their work, work life right. balance, their family, uh, uh, how, how close knit are their family relationships? Right. You know, that, that's why the, these blue zone analyses have, have been very useful because they don't just look at diet. They have looked at what are all the commonalities between all these pockets of centenarians and absolutely family, social activity, outdoor exercise, like all, there's so many factors, mental health, all these things. And you can't tease out which from which. And so all you got to do is look at the science around the people saying that fats were bad for you. And so the whole in the nineties, like you right. got to get rid of fats. And then they say, wait a second, fats, some fats are good, you know? Yeah. And so then that's just one noticeable example, but, um, I, I've I, I listen to some science podcasts and occasionally they dip into this whole topic. Right. And from what I understand, it's the the main thing health wise that we all need to do is uh, f follow the advice that your physician had, which was maybe meat, but maybe not. Not eating meat isn't gonna isn't gonna hurt you. You know, like if you if you don't eat meat, that's a good shortcut to getting to you know. But that's not the end of the thing, you know fiber essentially lots of lots of veggies um fruits also depending um a lot less animal products in general yeah. um and and you sh and the risks go down is yeah. it going to eliminate problems for you necessarily no but uh, but that's a general obviously it's more complicated than that but anyway my point is is that um uh it, a lot of people do it for health reasons um, and 2% say spiritual and religious, um, whether it's just like a r undefined spiritual sure. belief or being Hindu or Buddhist, mm -hmm. some Buddhism. Um, and then a small percentage of people but, just... But by the way, sorry, a, a lot of that could, or some of that, the Seventh-day Adventist community, oh. that's one of the largest vegetarian and vegan communities in the United States. Oh, interesting. And they're one of those groups that they've studied. Uh, and and it, it, there are definitely health differences between the vegetarian portion and the vegan portion of the Seventh-day Adventists. The vegetarians, of course, eat dairy and the vegans don't. Hmm. So um, also some people have a distaste for... So, so, this is, so I got this from uh, what I believe to be a pro-vegan source. And so, they, and so I put it in quotes. Uh, and then there's a smaller percentage of people who are vegan because they have a distaste for non-human animal flesh or products. Wait, but human animal flesh is okay? Right. <laughs> uh, in, other words, in other words, they just don't like meat, which, which is totally, you know. That's fine. Right. There are many people yeah, that's who, fine. who, like for me, for example, um, I don't like beef that much. Yeah. Like, right. like, if, like if I, uh, I, can, I, can, I can remember many moments of my life uh, either ordering or being f kind of fed a beef product and like really regretting it. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's cooked wrong or it's, right, right, or it's gristly and yeah. I'm, and I'm just powering through it. Like, Oh my Oh, I have God. those memories as a child. So many times I had to eat steak and it was so chewy and I had to sit there and chew yeah. it forever. And it had little uh, no, no, nodes of fat that were yeah. chewy. Ugh! Yeah. And also, when the 90s mad cow stuff happened, I gave up beef entirely for like a decade. Yeah. Uh. But I did every now and then eat a really good organic burger. So for me, as a meat eater, there are food, there's, there's meat that I eat and... I, I just don't think steak is really any better. And sometimes it's worse. Like, honestly, if you just took, except for hamburgers, you know, but honestly, I've had hamburgers that are made out of other animals that are just as good, you know? Yeah. Like lamb burgers or something. Anyway. Yeah. And also some people just have a preference for, for vegetables and they yeah. just, they just really love vegetables right. so much that they would love to eat those all the time, which is fine. Oh, by the way, that, that is one of the things, one of the reasons I thought I was already eating healthy is because I 
if you ask me like, well, do you eat meats as an example? Say like, well, I mean, I eat fish, which is super healthy, right? Like that was one. I eat fish, which is super healthy. Uh, if I do eat meats, it'll be like a lean turkey or lean chicken, you know, really lean, healthy meats. And every now and then I might eat pork. I don't really eat beef. So to me, that sounded really healthy. Well, chicken is loaded with cholesterol and it, chicken and salmon like compete for like how high they spike your insulin, mm -hmm. right? So it turns out I didn't know, but that didn't mean just because I was, oh, and by the way, depending on the fish you're eating and how much that could have a whole host of other, of other things. Right. So yeah. I, I took it that just because I wasn't eating beef and not that much pork that often that I was eating pretty healthy. Right. And like you said, well, and that's just on the meat side, but how much cheese are you eating? Oh, a lot. I ate cheese like almost every night I would eat like little gourmet cheeses and things. And then like, how often are you eating out at, fatty, saturated fat restaurants with like often, yeah. right? And how often are you eating vegetables and fruits actually eating, but never. Right. <laughs> so it's like, no, terrible. Right. And that's the thing. Like it's so complicated in our world, right? right? That it's like, you get this message. So fish is better than beef. Right. And they, oh, okay. And then it's like, okay, I eat tons of fish. And you're like, well, that, Ooh, that which might kind? not, it, how much, <laughs> how much, yeah. how's it prepared? Yeah. You know, like a deep fried, right. you know, like a, you know, a chicken stick of some kind or a fish stick, for right. example, is like terrible for you. Yeah, yeah. Anything deep fried, you know? <laughs> right. And so, but it's like, well, but I thought fish, you know, it's so complicated and that's why we need systems to provide this, you know, I don't know, nanny state. Um, <laughs> now, other reasons that I, so I, I did a fair amount of reading of research um, and I found that I, I started thinking like, well, I don't know, there's other reasons that I've seen people become vegan and vegetarian that, uh, or at least are partial factors that I, I don't see anyone talking about. Oh yeah? Which ones? Well, can you think of any that we haven't talked about so far? Uh, okay. Vegan or vegetarian. Um, Things that people wouldn't want to admit or might have a hard time sort of recognizing as oh, okay. to why they would okay. become vegetarian or vegan. Um, well, I'll give you one. So f f being phobic, uh, you know, there, oh. there's some people who have phobia for certain textures Oh, in their mouth and meat can be one of those things. Oh. Um, or they have a phobia, they have a sort of, they sort of have an eating disorder essentially. I mean, it's akin to an eating disorder in mm. that they have a pseudo delusion around contamination of certain things, yeah. you know, and, uh, or toxins, so to speak. And they're just, you know, uh, they get anxiety. Like if you, if you gave, they're not, they don't think of themselves as vegetarian or vegan for those other reasons. And right. if you gave them meat accidentally, they would actually be very, very terrified, you know what right. I mean? Right. And so... I guess another sort of similar one could be if you had a really bad experience. For example, I know that I know people that this has happened with, for example, one time they ate a certain kind of pasta and they got poison, like food poisoning, <laughs> and they never can eat that kind of pasta again because yeah. they, they just immediately that, feel sick. That happened to me with mustard. So oh, really? when, I, when I was I th like four, no, I was probably like eight, and I was on my way to camp for the summer, like day camp. Uh -huh. It was morning. And I, for some reason, asked my sister to make me a mustard sandwich. <laughs> and she just made me a, you know, she just two pieces of bread and un mustard untoasted with just mustard. What? <laughs> I don't know why. I think I, I was always kind of weird like that. You know, uh, I ate pickles on my ice cream cause, uh, cause Oscar the grouch ate pickles on that his ice cream. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, so I ate this mustard sandwich and I liked it. And then within 10 minutes or something, I had like violent diarrhea. Oh, but looking back, I had the flu. Ah, like I didn't, I didn't get food <laughs> it poisoning. It wasn't because of the mustard. <laughs> yeah. But because I associated it with that, mm -hmm. I thought I was actually allergic to mustard. Oh. And so for like all of my, until I was like 20 years old, I was like, people would say, would you like mustard on that? Yeah. I was no, like, no, no, no. I'm allergic. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm allergic. <laughs> and then some, I can't remember what happened. I was like in college or something. And I remember being like, no, 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 I'm allergic. Then I was like, wait a second. Am I allergic? How do I know I'm allergic to mustard, you know? 
Now I love mustard. But anyway, that's hilarious, actually. Right. So if you had a bad, so I'm I'm kind of that way with some with some, with beef on some level. Yeah. Like if I see beef at a like a dinner party or something, mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm or at a restaurant that I'm not quite like. Like if you get a steak salad, for example. Oh yeah. Like at a, I don't know, like a, a lower lower end restaurant of some yeah. kind. Like I I won't order that because I'm just like it's probably because of that reason. Yeah. It's just like the chance of it being a real nasty experience for me is kind of <laughs> right. high, and so I just would rather not. Um, another reason is culture wars. Um, f- to eat meat or to not eat meat. Right. You know, right now we have a partisan culture war between the left and the right, and. The rights associated with meat. Trump literally sells <laughs> steaks, um, and uh, you know. Well, if- there is something. By the way, I don't know if you if you you probably have heard about this. Uh, they there is this uh, feeling in the right uh, that vegetarians and vegans and you know they eat soy and they're effeminate. Well, and uh, they call the a lot of the uh, pro- progressive males. They call them soil. Uh, uh, soy babies or soy, soy, I forget the term, but they make fun of us. Oh, you eat soy and therefore your, your estrogen is, you know, you're, you're not male enough. You're not macho enough. Talk about Alex Jones and that, that crew. Yeah, absolutely. So there are, uh, cultural pockets, you know, the, um, the Alexis who wrote in, uh, she talked about going to, um, San Francisco and, in some circles, you could you could actually feel a ton of peer pressure to become vegan or vegetarian. Mm. Um, now, there's much more peer pressure in general in the opposite direction. Oh yeah. Um, so know. so that's something that I've encountered for the first time in my life. In that sense, that uh, I don't volunteer. Like I don't go up to people. I'm like, hey, FYI, I'm vegan. Right. I don't do that. Yeah. But what will happen is I'll go out to eat with someone or I'll be at someone's house. And a lot of times I, I don't tell them, but I just won't order. Like I'll order something on the menu that's like vegan or vegetarian. Or if they're serving stuff, I'll only grab like potatoes and the veggies and the stuff. And they're like, oh, aren't you going to have the chicken or the beef? And so at that point, well, it's, it's a little awkward. So I'll be like, well, I, I'm not eating. I'm mostly eating vegan. And immediately it's like, what? When did this start? And then it's like, well, but do you eat this? But the, oh, wait, you don't really eat just vegan then. Oh, but wait. And then there's, there's a thing. Yeah. And almost all my little pockets of friends make fun of me in one way or another about the vegan. Have I ever made fun of you for being vegan? I don't think so. No. But I have all, in every pocket of friends that I have, there's at least one or two that do that. Oh, in every pocket. Yeah, I yeah. See, yeah. So for example, you know, I have my friend, Michael, like he's like, he, he, he's like, oh, so now you're holier than that. Or, you know, stuff like that. My friend, Stephanie, she's like, oh, you're not really vegan because you make exceptions and all these other things. And uh, it, it just happens a lot. And I right. find it funny because I'm not trying to, in fact, oftentimes when it's like, well, why are you vegan? Part of me is like, oh, if I start saying the reasons, like you're going to start quoting things and then I like, we got to get into this thing and then we don't have the internet open here. And so I sort of want to like avoid it. Like, Oh, it's just a decision I made. But when like we finally get into it, a lot of times it ends up with like, well, but where do you get your protein or, or even more refined arguments, which are fair, but things like, well, I read this thing about like, or I'm going keto or I'm doing this and like, right. All right. All right. All right. Right. I mean, there, there are diets that, very popular ones yeah. that people follow today that are like mostly meat. The opposite, know? yeah. Mostly like saturated an, mostly fats. Mostly animal <laughs> products, yeah. By the way, um, if you have already drafted an email to us or a comment in the effing YouTube comment section debating the finer points of either one of our um, citations of science regarding health and food, uh, fuck you and keep it to yourself. Um <laughs> This, this episode is about what we're getting into now, which is more about the personality and right. uh, research regarding that kind of thing. Neither one of us are physicians or biologists, and I'm guessing you aren't either. <laughs> so uh, keep it to yourself. I don't want to hear something about like, oh, veganism is better for your health because or actually, you know, vegans are terrible for the environment or I don't know. It's just like, well, just I mean, I'm predicting like a bunch of bullshit comments. Like there, there's a certain comment that, I absolutely appreciate like, like 
I don't know. Just just getting to the point of the podcast and what my expertise is around. Like, but if someone just wants to spout, or if you're just like, hey, interesting episode. I just want to tell you my experience. Like, this is what I right. do. That's great. But like. Um, the fucking mansplaining that happens in some of these emails, actually, blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, oh, bore me See, to that tears. Stuff, that stuff doesn't bother me because I might just skip it. But the, the when it, when they get aggressive and offensive, that really that too. grinds my gears. All right. So the, here's another research uh, article, a uh, study by Herchler, 2011. They interviewed 32 vegans and asked them about various different things. And they found that their vegan diet was associated with increased physical well-being eudaimonic well-being do you know what eudaimonic means no it means happiness and uh you know psychologists love to like use jargon why not, why, not, why not just say happiness well you is like like euphoric euphoric um yeah. and spiritual well-being so i love this i love so tell me if you can figure out the problem with this statement in this sure. in this study so they interviewed 32 vegans mm -hmm. and they found that their, so and this their vegan diet was associated with an increase in physical well-being, eudaimonic, eudaimonic, basically happiness, yeah. and spiritual well-being. Period. What, sure. what, what do you think the problem is with that statement? Uh, well, for one thing, we're not comparing it to anything. Right. You know, it's just like some people are saying something about how they feel exactly. about something. Yeah. You're you, you're asking thirty two like vegans who decided to become right. vegan right. if being vegan made their life better. Right. W why would they still be vegan if they're if they didn't think their life was better? Right. One, two, people are always biased. You, right. you get thirty two people who switch from veganism to eating meat, they're all going to say, "Oh yeah, I have an increase in physical and spiritual well being now." Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, but yeah, um, it's great though. It means you know that sometimes going. I mean, when you became vegan, did you become happier? I mean, you became physically better, um, but did you feel happier in general? Like just I mean, better. I was happy because I was a losing weight, b feeling healthier, and c when I saw my results, I was like happy. <laughs> Great, yeah. yeah. Uh, participants reported strained professional and personal relationships as a result of their diet and their beliefs, um, which is terrible. I haven't experienced that. Like what I was saying, a lot of the joshing is just that, you know, just like little ribbing. Yeah, I but mean, I haven't like lost friends or something. Yeah, I mean. Um, Michael McManus, he just, he'd give you crap for anything. For anything. <laughs> I mean, he, he, and he's, you know, he's just joking with you. Right? Crap Meister General. He doesn't really care, right? right? I will say, though, I actually, it, it was way even harder in Bogota with my relatives. Oh. And, and the other thing that's happened is I have now been there three times where I've now, like where, where I've been doing this. And yet each time, including this last time, they act as it's the, the first time they've ever heard of it and how crazy of an idea it is. Yeah, I, I mean, I have a similar um, sort of vibe when I was with your family too, that it, it's much more of a collective vibe. You yeah. know, like we are going to be doing this right now. Right. And there's a super, and it's very, that's very different from America. Right. Um, and there's super pros to that, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, we are all going to be dancing right now. Right. Like at your grandma's birthday party, it's in, you know, arguably just like a, like a, just a total blank, bland room. Yeah. And the lights are on full bright. Yeah. And it's, it's not like the mood is not set. <laughs> the, it's like five in the afternoon uh -huh. and you have this guy with a keyboard uh -huh. Uh, singing and playing keyboard and he has like a drum machine and he's just he's just screaming these songs it's so loud <laughs> and and it's like um and i was like I've, i feel like i've been dancing and drinking all week like yeah. I, I just want to sit this one out it's plus it's like this is not my kind of environment or right. my music i don't know how to dance to this kind of thing were you allowed to sit it out no no <laughs> because your family just came up to me and said you're dancing with us now right. you know and, and they're like what's, what's wrong why, why are you not dancing right like is it, there something wrong yeah you gotta it's 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 too weird <laughs> to not have it that way and so um and you know like your grandpa would walk around with right. uh a, a right it's like you're not drinking <laughs> yeah and 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 you he would give you a shot right. your, your grandpa 
and you would just you would kind of just feign a sip. Right. I could tell you're like, I don't want to drink this right <laughs> now. And and you just kind of you just kind of sip it just barely, you know. You think, well, yeah. you're probably thinking, well, I'll nurse this and maybe yeah. I'll leave it somewhere right, and right, I won't right. drink it. But like people around you are like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. Whereas you wouldn't get that. I mean, there's certainly that kind of notion in American culture, but yeah. maybe not as as. I mean, it's just it's just more pervasive. And for example, with so the, it has the pros and cons. Yeah, yeah. And with the with the meats and things, uh, certainly, I'm sitting there at lunch, and oh, you're not eating the chicken. First of all, keep in mind, my grandma has just cooked chicken, pork, and beef all at the same time, right? It's like you're not eating the chicken. Well, I I had a little of the pork. Oh, but you have to try the chicken. And they know, they know, I've told them. It's not like I haven't, I, I've made it clear that I'm trying to eat vegan. What do you think is going through their mind? Do, are they just in denial? Well, there, there's a combination. Part of it is like, this is where I grew up. It's a tradition to eat there. It's my grandma Liti's cooking. So certainly me, and, and they know me as a big eater. And I would eat everything. Like I would, anything put on that table, I would eat it. So... Yeah, if anything, they, I might not grab some of the veggies. They seem to really like me because I, I just right. I like vacuumed everything right, that, yeah. your, that your grandma made. Um, and for example, like if I really was trying to be a strict vegan while I'm there, I could eat nothing for breakfast. Because she makes these delicious arepas filled with cheese and these eggs. And they're, they're amazing. I really do love them. So if I'm there, I'd be like, okay, grandma, I guess I'm not eating breakfast. <laughs> Um, even the, on the days where she makes this, this green plantain, crushed pl- green plantain, which would be totally vegan, but then you have to spread butter and then cheese on it. <laughs> Do you think that they don't like the fact that you're vegan Oh, and, and wish that you weren't? Probably to some degree. I think internally it might, I, I guess, bug them a little bit that it's like, okay, you know, in the sense of like, but where's our normal bear though? Like, whoa. What's going on? Yeah. And I think on the surface, of course, they're, they're trying to be supportive and sort of like trying to understand. But it's probably like if I came out, you know, gay. <laughs> uh, by, by the way, I found out on that trip that apparently it's really still dangerous to be an open gay in, in Colombia. Really? I didn't realize that. I mean, I would have guessed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they also found in this study that they often had some sort of catalytic experience that uh, prompted them becoming vegan did you have one you well you had that when i you, had that for when sure you, when you had the the the, yeah. med- the medical resort yeah, yeah that must have been pretty scary just like yeah. oh my god um all right they asked these 32 vegans why do you think other people are not vegan you know like from this assumption as but basically in the study of just like how come everyone is so stupid or something kind of yeah, along yeah. those lines um why do you think uh, what do you think they said? Misinformation or like lack of information. Yeah. What else? Um, uh, uh, just too much attachment to what they like eating. Okay. Uh, like tradition, you know. Uh, okay. Um, and maybe, maybe it's just fear of be, being unhealthy by being vegan or vegetarian. Like false fear. Yeah. Yeah. Can can you think of other reasons why people would not be vegan other than those reasons? Uh, they don't like the things they would have to eat. Okay. Uh, to be a healthy vegan. Because again, I, as, I, as I outlined, you could be a very unhealthy vegan and eat yummy stuff all the time. Right. right. Or what you would you know, think of as yummy or whatever. Uh, so I think, I think, yeah, that would be one is like, hey, well, I, I guess I would like to try it. But honestly, I hate veggies. I hate beans, I, which was sort of where I was at, right, really. Um, and then another one might be that they have, what I was saying is like the political bias of like, that's actually un-American. Like that's not, that's not what America is about. America, yeah. we eat beef and potatoes and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it could also be a religious thing. Like in the Bible, it, it does say that you eat certain things. And yeah. You know, so so I, I, this is maybe why people are annoyed with vegans, because in this study and in terms of what you said, um, at no point did you say anything that was sympathetic. You know, uh, I mean, some things weren't terribly unsympathetic, mm-hmm. but at no point like 
I would want someone to say about me, the reason mm -hmm. why I'm not vegan is because I am thinking big picture and I'm doing my best in terms of health and morals and for the environment. I'm right. trying. And I also would like to change the system, uh, meat and otherwise, so that we can meet our goals that I'm guessing vegans are trying to meet. But I feel like you're probably in a minority. <laughs> but but I don't know. But at the very least, yeah. it's an option that I it's actually... It's certainly, like the way you're speaking about it is like everyone else I talked to about that is in the same camp that I was in, the, the, the most common thing I hear is like, well, I'm never giving up my fill in the blank. Right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but I just find it interesting that like, so I'm just going to list these reasons that they yeah. found and, and none of these paint non-vegans, which uh -huh. are 97% of Americans right. uh, in a good light. Um, so basically convenience, uh, as you said, lack of practical knowledge about what to eat and how to prepare it, lack of information about the benefits, lack of information about the suffering of animals, intentional ignorance, religious beliefs that quote unquote condone meat eating, <laughs> Uh, belief in uh, the physical and psychological necessity of animal products, marketing uh, things, the hidden nature of food production, issues related to identity and yeah. and laziness, uh, lack of lack of empathy. That's a great one. Lack of empathy. Um, people aren't vegan because they lack empathy. That's a great statement. Well, um, some are. I mean, at, at least from the. Well, I guess if you're a psychopath, you. No, 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 no. I I have friends that fully say like. I have no problem with animals getting like, or there's some people that grew up in a farm and they, they say like, but it's listen, not, I grew up, I, I was there when we would slaughter the thing. I have no problem with that. It's a lack of empathy for animals. Yeah. Which it's That's not a I mean. lack of empathy. They have a right. lack of empathy for animals right. because they don't consider animals yeah. to be. But uh, someone can interpret sort of that creature. as a lack of empathy in some regard. You know, but the, in the study, it just says lack of empathy. Right. When no, I no, see that, lack of empathy, I think, Lack of empathy. No, that's what I'm saying. Like someone, clearly some people do, they would say, well, if you lack empathy for animals, you lack some empathy. You lack empathy for animals. No, you lack some empathy. You lack empathy for animals. You don't have empathy for bacteria, right? Well, but, but that's what I'm trying to say. Do is you have empathy for bacteria? Probably not. Okay. Do you lack empathy? No. You lack empathy for bacteria. Some people have empathy for bacteria. But I, what I'm trying to say is that if you imagine that there's some, some amount of empathy that a human can have, I could see some people equating not having empathy for animals as lacking overall empathy. I could see them equating it with that, but yeah. I don't think that that's scientifically sound. Well, but I mean, I think to some extent, if you're less able to relate to other creatures just because they're not human, you probably have less empathy. That's an interesting hypothesis. Yeah. I, I wonder if that's true. Right. I and I mean, there is some evidence that shows that, that, you know, if, if you lack empathy for, for humans, you definitely lack empathy for animals. Well, and then, you know, like, as we know, a lot of psychopaths start by lacking empathy towards animals. That's right. And there are the vast majority of humans on the planet eat animals and right. are, but they don't think about it. Right. Like to be fair, I grew up there not plenty, on a farm. Plenty of people are extremely knowingly. Uh, doing things to animals, not out of ignorance, not because they live in a society like the United States where it's completely separate. They live in societies where they see the animals and it and they die. And the claim that those people are less empathetic individuals is a is a very interesting claim. Well, but have you seen? So, like, I've seen uh, I've seen videos where they where the, a kid fr first finds out where they're what what they're eating comes from. Then they didn't grow up on a farm. So to them, it is sort of a black box. It's like, oh, I eat chicken. And they know what a chicken is. But then when an adult puts together, it's like, well, a chicken, you know, had to be put to, it had to be killed yeah, so I, that you could eat. I'm not like, saying. In that moment, the child goes, oh. I'm not saying that someone who has a lot of empathy is, isn't more uh, open to the idea of animals deserving of our empathy. But the notion of animals deserving empathy is a cultural notion. All you got to do is look at Japan. Japan is filled with very empathetic people. They do horrible things to animals, like right out in the open. I just think we have different definitions then. Because like to me, like empathy isn't just about humans. But I think you're thinking of like empathy. overall empathy is about humans. 
And you might also have different categories of empathy, like category for animals or for other things. Right. And I'm just thinking like, uh, maybe that's true. But like I, like I said, there are some people who have empathy for bacteria. Sure. By your definition, they have more empathy than you do. They might. Yeah. I don't think so. It's well, a decision. I mean, it's, a, it's a decision around who you direct your empathy towards. And, and, and it's also based on the culture you grew up in. I grew up in a culture that I never saw anything being slaughtered. Yeah. So to see that is very upsetting to me. And I also grew up in a society with cats and dogs as being basically family members. So I have tremendous empathy for cats and dogs. Yeah. I did not grow up in a society that has um, empathy for rats. Right. People in, my, people in, in Seattle regularly kill rats all the time, no problem. Uh, especially if you can't see it, <laughs> you know, right. you put poison in a thing and you kill the rat, ha ha, killed the rat. Um, I had a pet rat, <laughs> so I have a little bit of empathy for rats. Um, whereas if I grew up in a society on a farm and, you know, things were slaughtered all the time, um, I would have a different sense of that. Well, I mean, just let me make a more vertical thing. I think if you can watch videos of the slaughterhouses that are the, those horrible videos and be like, I'm okay with that, you have less empathy. That's I, my statement. Yeah, we have different definitions of empathy. All right. <laughs> um, and by the way, most people growing up in our culture are very much terrified by that and affected right. by it. Right. But, if you grew up in a culture, but, but, but that goes to your point that most people have empathy. And, but if you grew up in a culture where that was regular routine, then it would be different. It'd be different. I don't deny that culture and you wouldn't, empathy. And you wouldn't have less empathy. It would just be a different definition of what constitutes deserving of empathy or not. Do you think empathy is just genetic? Uh, no. Okay. That, I think culture affects empathy. Right. So, but not the amount of empathy. It affects the... What else is it affecting? It affects the, the target of empathy. Well, okay, fine, but... I, like like, a, like a, someone can grow up in a society where they don't have empathy for black people. Sure, but I like you asked me if I thought that the bacteria empathy person has more, and I said yes. I, know. I think when and you add all the buckets, and it adds your, to more empathy. And that's your definition. Right. <laughs> I'm saying that uh, it, we're, you know, our, our context is a big deal. Yes. Um, another study, Bezold et al. 2015, uh, found that when people went to a strict plant-based da diet, it did not appear to impact their mood. So they were actually trying to prove that they were trying to disprove the notion that going vegan made you more depressed or something. You know, oh, because, there was a notion that being vegan made because you, you lacked certain nutrients for the brain or something. And what they found was actually when people went vegan, they didn't become in a worse mood and they didn't become in a better mood. <laughs> they just, right. they stayed the same mood, which is kind of what you were yeah. saying. It's just like, well, I'm happier that I'm healthy, but um, I'm not necessarily, and I'm in a better mood, I guess, because of the benefits of that, yeah. but, but I'm the same birdo before right. and after. Like there's certainly like, it's, it's like not rocket science, right? There are benefits I have reaped that are, unexpected for example i have better skin like you think why well i just i'm getting more minerals and, and vitamins yeah period right i have better skin i'm also getting more water in my diet and more fiber right i so you know does that make me happier yes but it's not like oh i'm more at peace with the universe you know it's not like it's, it's just a one-to-one -one. i am if i am healthier and i'm you know feeling better about myself i am happier great yeah all right so to conclude uh, patron Alexis had a number of questions that she basically asked either implied or otherwise. So let's, let's answer those questions. What do you say? Yeah. Are vegans looking down on non-vegans? Um, yeah, I'm sure some do, <laughs> yeah. but I'm guessing most aren't. I mean, I've met militant people on the vegan persuasion. My, my, my experience of vegetarians and vegans are that they just want to be left alone. <laughs> That's true for me. <laughs> they, they're just like, look, I don't care what you people eat. Just yeah. leave me the fuck alone. That's true for me. <laughs> like, and, and like, and like, and like uh, you know, or they, they, they don't even want people to make special dishes for them. Right. They'll just be like, look. I'm just going to eat around whatever. Yeah. You, yeah. Make your goddamn dishes. Yes. And 
just don't pay attention to what I'm eating. Yes. And in fact, I've tried that and, and it's still like, whoa, whoa, but you know, like, and I'm like, stop, stop. Just, right. yeah. And so I agree with that. But, but yet, and yet there are some, there vegans. are some that, and I've met some, I actually, when I wasn't, yeah. I remember having, uh, a, at least two times I remember, and to be fair, it, it was probably my fault because I remember being dismissive. Like you're, you know, like I probably even was an asshole, right? Like you're a what? But then th- th- I did get this feeling of like, well, then I, you're trying to make it sound like I'm inferior because you are this, but I probably triggered it. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I get it. I, I mean, it, and I've seen you have some of these attitudes in the past couple of years. If, if you really think about it, which doesn't take much brain power to do, if there's a choice to be made and you can manage it or at least try it out, veganism is going to benefit a lot of things. Right. Uh, you know, there are a lot of, or at very, the very least, like some of the practices of these, of this chicken, you know, production situation, even, even yeah. some of the so-called like free range is actually like really awful. Right. And, you know, as a society, we just look at chickens and we're like, well, they're birds. They don't have feelings. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah they do. They have feelings. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so I get it. So once you're in that zone and you're just looking, it's, you know, I hate to make this comparison, Berto, but this is similar to pro-life people. You know, yeah. once you make the choice in your mind that a conceived life is a life, right then you're looking at people who support abortion and, and, oh, of course. and have abortions as doing something extremely yeah. immoral. Well, or, or take a maybe a different side of this coin. Uh, atheism. Okay. So, because I've run into the same similar thing where, you know, we are in the minority, atheists. We're in the minority. And if you have a conversation with most folk um and you're too aggressive about your atheism it has a visceral emotional reaction right so it's like what but but in the atheist mind it's like well once you've made that switch mentally it seems impossible like you're like but how can you still believe you know right that kind of thing yeah that's a good example yeah less controversial so <laughs> yeah and i guess we have to all navigate this but um and I think this is how you do it when I see you inter- interface with religious people, which is most people or spiritual people, you are, you make your case, but you're not like, you're a dumbass for being right. a believer. Like, Especially because I was there up until I was 31. So who am I to claim like anything, you know? Right. And uh, why be a dick? Right. You know? Um, and if we're going to change people's minds, like you have to, you can't alienate them. All right. Next question. Do we need to eat meat to be healthy? Uh, you're asking me that question? Yeah. Based on the research I've done? No. No, absolutely not. The uh, research is support of that. Especially in America with the abundance of various different vector vectors to different nutrients and, and sorts of things you need. Um, you absolutely don't need to eat meat to be healthy. There's there's many there's many roads to being healthy. Um, you can eat meat and be healthy um, for sure. Like for instance, for me, based on my diet, I had my blood drawn recently, and I'm all all in the green. Yeah. Even though I haven't been doing, I would I would say I'm eating. I mean, I'm just I've been slowly introducing practices um, over throughout my life. Yeah. And for whatever reason, that combination results in. Good numbers. I also happen to have not that bad, that means I'm healthy, right? But right. according well, to I, those, I cultures. happen to have bad genetics in from my dad's side of the family that contribute to me being more susceptible to getting into a, a red state. Okay, and Wh- which I want to add to what you were talking about earlier in terms of the channel you watch, right. inflammation, this kind of stuff, is that this is why the science is so hard to pin down is that there's so many different uh, right. reactions that people right. have. You know? And, and uh, I will say the, uh, what, what convinced me for myself. And don't email me people. I don't want to fucking hear it. <laughs> what convinced me for myself is that when I, <laughs> when I followed, I get a sick pleasure. I think listeners, you know, telling people to fuck off and not and not email me about stuff that I don't want to hear about. I, I think I just realized that 
I get kind of a sick pleasure doing that. It's I think kind of you a, also get a sick pleasure of doing what they've told you you shouldn't do. Which is interrupt you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but no, but what I was saying is like for me, the proof for, for what I needed was that when I followed for those, you know, it was like four months or whatever, uh, J- July, August, September. August. Yeah, it's like four months. When for four months I followed the diet that my research that was based on, on studies and things said this should work for me to be healthier. When I did that and I really followed to it, my numbers, my scientifically derived numbers for my blood went from red to green. And for me, I was like, okay, well, for me, this works then, right? And, and then I could say like, yeah, maybe for other people, it might not work the same, but for me, this works. Right. Uh, and that was, that was important because I, I, oh, by the way, one of the reasons I hadn't ever had to try this is because I always thought, uh, yeah, I was like, I could lose weight, all these things. But I always felt like, well, I, I just eat less or exercise more, eat less. It makes sense. The, the one that actually really made me nervous was the, 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 the thyroid number. Because as I started doing research on that, when I asked the doctor, I'm like, well, what can, what can I do? And she said, well, we'll have to test it again. But if it's still showing this, we might have to start you on thyroid replacement. It's like this hormone they, they inject, like you basically start for the rest of your life. You have to take these pills that replace your, your and over, over time, your thyroid then starts actually not doing its job. Ugh. And my uncle has done that for like 30 years or something. And so I thought, oh, shit. So because of that, I started doing all this research into the thyroid and all these things. And one, one thing I realized was this wasn't something I could just like eat less and exercise for. It was either like, this is the fact, this is the road I'm going down, or what else can I learn? And all the research I did into Hashimoto's and all these things, I, it kept coming back like, okay, a whole food-based, plant-based diet might actually help me. Yeah. And when I looked at the numbers, it did. I don't know if it's going to help me long-term, but it did. Right. So I was like, okay. I'm convinced right. that was for me, my journey. And then you'd give it a try Yeah, and it might work and it might not. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I've been on a similar journey with my dog. She has one of the worst um, seizure disorders that the vets have ever seen. Oh my gosh. Um, like 48, she has these bouts where she'll, every month she'll have like a, she'll go through like a bout of it. And, and, she, and when it gets bad, it's like, two or three days straight oh my God. of her having seizures like every hour and, and full grand mall oh, no. on the ground. Her mouth is like wider than you can imagine a dog's mouth could be. She shits everywhere. She pees everywhere. She salivates. Oh, no. She, she bites her tongue. She bangs her head against things. If, yeah. if we're not there to like watch her, um, she uh she's totally convulsing it it looks like the most painful death you've ever seen an animal go through yikes and it just happens over and over day and night three in the morning five in the morning you know and it's uh it's just horrendous to watch and then in between she's like real disoriented and she gets kind of paranoid and scared of things and and then you got to put her on these meds and like that doesn't really work. And then she gets real kind of drugged up and stuff. What? Well, so with the past couple of years, we've been on this journey with like all these different meds, all these different regimens, mm-hmm. um, try this med, double this med, try these three meds. Well, let's get her off the meds. Let's do this. Like nothing was working really. Yeah. I mean, occasionally something would work kind of. We would take her into the vet uh, for, you know, like overnight mm. and they couldn't do anything. Like they would, yeah. as, 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 uh, Aside from just sedating her so she could, so she was asleep essentially, right. so she can't, she can't wake, you know. Um, so it was, um, it was awful, and um, the vets were just like, "Man, you know, this is really weird that like none of our normal, because it's kind of a common thing that dogs uh-huh. have seizures, and they, and so they, they usually know how to treat it, right? And they also said that if your dog has, um, you know, is non-responsive to meds and has repeated seizures, hmm. the chance that they'll die soon is actually really high. But they said that a long time ago. Yeah. Anyway, so experiment with this, experiment with that, you know, maybe some diet changes, blah, blah, blah. Well, finally got her on an all raw diet. Right. Just all raw meat. Raw meat. Raw meat. Dogs are carnivores. They, they eat raw meat. Right. Just like 
freaking just raw meat. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, and, you know, knock on wood, things have gotten better. Now, right. I've said this before, but this has been one of the longest kind of bouts of, of, she still has seizures, but they're way, way more handleable. And, um, so when, so, you know, the vets weren't giving us bad advice. No, they were giving us like, based on statistics, this is what typically works. And, and, and they had, you know, told me about this raw diet a long time ago and they are like, well, you know, might work, might not, but you know, there's these other things, you know, there's a lot of things that right. we're trying and, and, this was the one that worked. Yeah. And so the conclusion is not every dog should be on a raw food diet. Sure. You know, because uh, it's not necessary for, for, for most dogs, you know. So for you, yeah. this worked for that. But, it, you know, and, and that's the problem that I see in the media and amongst some of these uh, charismatic diet gurus is that they'll – They'll point to, you know, actual cases and research looking at things and they'll say like, therefore, everyone needs to do this. That's sure. why you have some people who are totally in the cult of the keto diet. Sure. You have people who are co totally in the, in, in the opposite diet itself, the vegan diet, you know, yeah. totally in the zone diet, totally in the um, Atkins diet or totally in, you know, paleo diet and stuff. And it's like, yeah, you know, it might work for you and try it out and, you know, go for it. And, you know, make sure you follow certain guidelines so that, you know, it, you don't you create a bad version of that diet. Anyway, another question. Last four questions. Is, meat, is eating meat the natural order of things, Berto? Uh, for carnivores, it, it is. So a carnivore's body, their, their, uh, their mouth, their uh, hunting mechanisms, their digestion system, what nutrients they can derive from what they eat, absolutely geared towards uh, meat. So uh, hence why, you know, lions and tigers and bears, they, uh, they produce vitamin C themselves because <laughs> they don't eat fruit. They just eat meat and uh, meat, they get everything they need from meat and their, their digestion works fine with raw meat. In fact, they can eat, uh, se several of them can eat meat that's gone kind of bad because they have the right enzymes and the right amount of acid that can digest that. The extremes are like vultures and, and hyenas, and not even hyenas, but like mostly vultures and, uh, and other carrion eaters that have such a high acidity in their stomach that they absolutely can eat putrid, rotting flesh that would kill a lot of other animals. So it's not like, is meat the right order of things? Is, is the meat the right order of things for your type of animal? Humans, for most of the ape evolution, are not omnivores. They're not carnivores. They are uh, vegetarian. They're, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, plantivores. How do you call herbivores. it? Herbivores. Herbivores, thank you. Uh, when you look at our, our uh, chewing mechanism, at our stomach, at, at the fact that we depend on vitamin C externally, all these things. Uh, it just happens to be that when humans were able to start cooking, it radically changed what humans could consume. Not only what meats, but they could consume tubers. They could consume a lot of other stuff that they didn't used to be able to eat and digest well. So our diet, our modern diet, we get away with murder, literally, about what we can eat. We can eat what? almost anything nowadays. Right. Well, so the question you're getting at, which is good detail, is the what is the... You know, we, we typically equate the natural order of things as to what we did back in the old days. Sure. And, uh, and essentially your argument is the old days are when, before we found fire yeah. and, and, and that's our natural order of things. We have of course evolved since then. Yeah. So it, 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 we've, we've technologically evolved for sure. You know, our, our, our species has changed. For example, yeah. Um, a little bit. <laughs> there are people on this planet who are have evolved this their race, right. their group, to process uh, milk and and cheese uh, better than others easily. Yeah. And other groups where it's really hard for them. That's right. Other groups where alcohol is easier to metabolize than other groups, and um, because essentially um, there was so much dairy in the diet that like people who were lactose intolerant essentially like died out yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or couldn't give birth or something. Right. And so over time, and the same with like ratios from fish to grains and, you know, there's all right. sorts of different differences between Asians and, uh, and J Japanese people and French people and native Americans, you know, there's, 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 there's been a change, a drifting, if you will. The but, species right. is the same, but, you well, know, one, a, a, one of the, an adaptation. Right. 
And one of the big challenges is that uh, with the the things that technology brought us that were, you know, like eating cooked meats and things. So uh, killing an animal and cooking and eating it was an amazing source of calories and nutrients, right? Yeah. So of course it became very useful. Uh, but humans didn't have to survive well into their 80s, 90s in a healthy way. That wasn't a necessity. Right. You just had to procreate and then stick around long enough to defend the tribe. And that's about the length, length of time you are needed. Yeah. And nowadays, it's kind of the opposite problem. We got like in Japan and a few other places, like a lot of old people and they need to be healthy because it's costing us a shit ton of money. Right. So that's a consideration. <laughs> also, even when we did kill animals 200,000 years ago in the African Serengeti during the Pleistocene, we still ate a lot of available calories that was just growing out of the earth yeah, around right. us. And lots of fiber, way more fiber. Right. They find like 10x the amount of fiber in the stomachs of like, you know, the, the cavemen right. and stuff like that. Because those calories were so abundant yeah. and close by and, and didn't require fighting with, you know, right. a mastodon, you know. And so it was um, what we ate mostly. But when we could manage it to spend the calories actually to kill the thing or to or to find the dead carcass um yeah it was a it was packed with a lot of with a lot of calories okay next question should we roll our eyes at PETA people for the ethical treatment of animals uh, I don't know about roll your eyes I, I do know that both Greenpeace and PETA in the past I think they've done things that I've question whether that was the right approach yeah uh, i don't have enough information to be like here's all the things i know about PETA. uh that said do i want there to be a society that looks out for the protection of animals yeah right i this is the same problem i have with the internet and feminism like our society when you talk about animal rights people go PETA, but it's like PETA's is one organization of I'm guessing hundreds, if not thousands of organizations that are working for uh, the ethical treatment of animals. Um, Greenpeace uh, is one organization that right. is uh, trying to fight for environmentalism causes. Uh, so it's, so there's that. Um, I tried to find information too, yeah. uh, but the only articles I could find that talked about the good things about PETA were PETA itself. I see. I, could, I, I couldn't find a single article outside of PETA that talked about anything good about PETA. It was like, there's a lot of PETA hate going on. Um, what does PETA stand for? Protect people, people for people the ethical who, treatment of animals. Oh, got it. They, there's just a lot. They, like, for example, they, I think, propose the idea of euthanizing pets so that we stop giving birth to more pets or something. Yeah. Anyway. Um, all right. Now, second to last question. Why are omnivores defensive when they meet a vegan? Omnivores defensive when they meet a... Yeah, which I have encountered a lot. Um, okay. So I think a few reasons probably. One of them can be um, they might, you know, just like with the atheist thing, it challenges their their worldview. It might, they might feel like they're being asked to change by the person who is a vegan, even if they're not really asking them to change. Uh, they, and I, I certainly used to be like this, they might also just find the notion ridiculous or temporary. But why? Because it's like, what do you mean you don't eat meat? Everyone eats meat. Yeah, like but it's, why? It's yummy. But like, why are, you are, why are, why, oh, it just seems outlandish. Yeah, like, come on, or, or like, Oh, like, is I this, just figured is, out. Is this your new fad? Outlandish is like outland. Yeah, like from some, the other land. You're not from here. Did you make that connection? No. Well, I mean, just now. because <laughs> It's interesting. Like, yeah. it, it's always interesting to like have a word that you've been saying. Right. And also, wait a second. It outlandish. literally means outland. Outlandish, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's that's part of it. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm saying from, from where I used to be, I, that was certainly part of it, which was like... I, I, these people aren't serious. Like you're not really gonna, the rest of your life, you're just gonna eat plants. Well, I find that that notion really is a secondary reaction to the first reaction that you said, which is essentially a feeling of defensiveness around 
this implied accusation that you right. that you are unethical. Right. You're just, doing something that is not quite right. Right. Because there's a lot of things that seem outlandish that people do that people don't care. You know, like I'm right. I'm I'm deciding that I'm going to wear my underwear on inside out every day. Like most people are like, okay, but you're not going to feel personally attacked. But right. when you say I'm vegan, even if you just say like, I'm sort of trying veganism, there's this, there's this cultural association with that, even yeah. though it might not be present in that interaction of I'm eating vegan because I believe that, uh, you know, mistreating animals is extremely, extremely abhorrently immoral. And, and therefore, if you don't also say you're vegan, you're a monster, I, you're a yeah, monster. Yeah, yeah. and, um, but you know, those messages are almost never, uh, held by the vegan, right. let alone said, you know, and by the way, I think similar stuff happens with, you know, you're at a party and they start serving booze and someone's like, Oh no, sorry, I don't drink. Everyone's like, you don't drink? Well, it was like that night when I was at that party at <laughs> Columbia that we talked about. And exactly. I was like, I want to, I drank last night with Umberto. You don't drink? And then tomorrow <laughs> night we're going to paint the town in, in the douchebag zone of, of, of Bogota. Like, I need one night of, you know, to like, well, and I was drinking rum, by the way. Right, right. And they're just like, more, more, you know. Well, so it, rewind the clock 18 years. Uh, I used to have a group of friends that were pretty heavy into certain kinds of drugs like uh, ecstasy and, and mushrooms and things like that. And I knew this and they knew that I knew this, but uh, they knew that I didn't do those kinds of drugs and I didn't judge them at all. I, I was perfectly fine being around them, whatever. It's like, I didn't care, but they cared. And so like they would, they even told, one of them told me, it's like, yeah, well, the thing is like, we sort of don't want you around if we're gonna be doing that because we know you don't do it. and i'm like but why like right. do i have to do it? it's like no you don't have to it's just like and i think it's a little similar it's like totally a little bit of like are you judging us oh what no no i had the exact same hum i had a huge fight with a friend of mine in college because he smoked pot like all day every day you know he woke up he smoked pot at work he smoked pot he got home from work he smoked pot before he went to bed he smoked pot hmm. after having sex he <laughs> smoked pot after just before eating he smoked pot before watching seinfeld he smoked pot it was fine i didn't yeah. care i mean i had a bunch of friends that were like that i yeah. wasn't like that and i was just like well not for me and he before i knew it i was like half an hour into a conversation where i was basically I felt like he was emotionally abusing me, oh, trying no. to basically beat me down. About to, ab to do pot. Because he, I don't know, he wanted me to, I think, smoke pot every day with him or something. Right. And it wasn't like he was just asking me. He was just like, like at the conversations start out with like, you know, so do you have a problem with it? And I'd, And so I'd feel like, oh, well, I guess I have to explain myself. Right. Well, I don't know. It's just not for me because why? You know, it's just right. like you get like, you know, da, da, da. I'd be like, well, I don't know. And then like at, at, at first it just felt like, oh, I'm just answering a couple questions. Right. But then half an hour in, I'm feeling terrified. I'm like my heart's racing and <laughs> I feel like I'm trying to defend myself. And I, and I feel like I'm being, you know, like invaded in my brain almost. And same sort of thing. And, right. you know, and afterwards I was like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. And I, and I, I was like, oh, he probably doesn't feel very comfortable with the fact that he smokes pot all the time. And by me not smoking pot all the time, he, he like thinks that. I'm judging him right. for smoking pot all the time when I don't care. <laughs> like right. it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, it was, like him, him on pot was just normal him. You know, he, yeah. he wasn't, he never got super high, you know, it was always just kind of like, I'm guessing kind of a mild high. Well, you know? and for me, it was always interesting because like, you know, I drink alcohol and alcohol can be just as or more damaging than a lot of different, you know, kinds of drugs. Oh, right? absolutely. And so it's undoubtedly the most destructive drug. Right. So it's not like, so it's not like I'm judging them from a position of like, I never touch an, a substance that alters well, my plus, brain. If you're the one hanging out with a group of drug right. users what good is it for you to sit there and look at all of them and go like, what's wrong with right, you people? Right, right. It doesn't, yeah. If now, anything, you're just like, don't, 
don't notice me that I'm not using yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, because I'm having fun. Yeah. That was, as you, you know me enough to know that, would I really need like that kind of stimulant to be happy in a group? No, I'm like, right. I, I'm happy in a group, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But anyways, yeah, it's similar, similar feeling of like, you're judging me somehow. Right, right. So I think that people hate on vegans because and vegetarians just just the notion of it because they feel it because in that moment that they're faced with you they have to they the the question mark enters their brain that they do not want to question yeah which is am i doing something bad right for me for the world for the environment for animals and if that is true and just that question mark in my brain gives me stress. Right. And how do I get rid of that stress? I attack the source of that, what I consider to be the source of that stress, which is this other individual. Right, right, right. And that's why it happens. Oh, by the way, one of the, I saw a movie that really helped me conclude that I would be safe. The, the, the whole protein question, that I would be safe uh, not eating meats to get protein. Because uh, it was a documentary that I, th- I don't know if I told you to watch or you watched it or something. It was uh, called Strongman, I think. It's not a great documentary, but it is interesting. It is interesting because it's is this actual um, a real story. It's a documentary about a, a guy who's a Polish guy, super the kind that bends things, you know? A strong man. A strong man. One and of those he, classic circus. That's right. Yeah. But he's like awkward. He's like sort of awkward and he never really had huge success, but he was sort of well known in the circuit and stuff. The whole point is this guy is massive, huge, one of the strongest guys in the planet. And he just eats Arugula. vegetables. Oh. Corn is his source of protein. Like he just yeah. eats vegetables. Totally. And he's like, he, he says like, I'll eat like 10 ears of corn and stuff like that. And this guy is massive. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean... So uh, I was like, all right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Gorillas eat plants. <laughs> right. Uh, all right, so in conclusion, I will say that if you want to contribute to the non-harming of animals, then becoming vegetarian and, you know, better yet, vegan is, is something you can do. Um, but overall, what we need to be doing is doing big picture stuff, Um which is to look at animal cruelty in general. And I, I personally, my moral beliefs say that I can absolutely live with a uh, world in which we treat animals uh, very well. And then there's one minute when they just, you know, they die. And there's a lot of things that happen with these um, animal practices. Like you want to keep their ant, their, their children with them, you know, <laughs> like, um, yeah. uh, like there's these practices of just, like, I just think of all the attachment problems that go, that these animals go through because of, I always think of, um, aliens having these conversations about us, right? Like, like, I mean, the humans, they, they write poetry, they sing songs. I know. So in our camps, we let them write music, sing songs. They're with their youngins. And then one day, we just kill them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially if we were in, um, well, anyway, my yeah. point is, is that, uh, I can, I can, my right. morals say that I can live with that. And I, and I'm honestly like, I look at the universe and I'm like, Hey, I, it sucks or it doesn't, I don't know, but there's a circle of life Yeah. and animals kill animals. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't go back to the Pleistocene and look at, uh, people hunting no. uh, a wildebeest as like being no. I- immoral. And and we kill organisms, living cells, organisms by the trillions constantly. Right. And so I, so I can live with that. But there, the the 99.99% of, you know, practices for uh, animal usage for human purposes is um, if you knew what was happening, you would say, yikes. So... Uh, so we need to have systems in place that is through politicians uh, passing laws and uh, looking and working with environmentalists and farmers and livestock people to create a system that works and as rational that uh, creates a system 
that can be sustainable and isn't harm, totally harmful to animals. What this will mean is sacrifices. And as I said, that, that's, that's a sign of growing up. You make sacrifices. It probably means that... Do you, do you mean like sacrifices on the mount where you take a, mm -hmm. a sheep and you... We put on the mount convenience and uh, the, the bulk of, of meat we have. Like in my world, I would guess the consequence would be meat would be much more expensive... Uh, two, there would be much less of it uh, available. Uh, three, you would um, be forced, I suppose, to eat other things that you might not actually prefer because they're more healthy for you. I mean, that, the reason why we have trouble telling people to eat their veggies is because, let's be honest, you know, like, they're not as good. <laughs> you know, like, it, it, it's, it's for me and for many people, it's just like, you know, you give someone a, the choice of a carrot or a, or a um, you know, a bag of chips. It's like, you know, there's one thing that our brain responds to, yeah. uh, literally the same that it responds to. We have to, addictive responses to sugar and right. fat and salt. <laughs> yeah, our brain uh, developed reward systems for things like cocaine for a reason. Right. Uh, to reward us for seeking out those things on the savanna that were very rare. Like and, heroin. <laughs> right. So... You know, we didn't have those things back then, but we did have fats and sugars and, and, and salts. And so uh, we became extremely motivated to, you know, cross the, f you know, I don't know, five miles you needed to go in order to track down that one thing. That's because it was high, high in calories. It, it is, it is funny to think, and this is, I, I think what we lose so often for most of our evolution, there was literally no sugar like obviously there's fruits with sugar there's there's vegetables with sugar there's 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 the molecules but there's no like shaker with sugar in it right you know there's no refined sugar anywhere right there's no refined salt until you know people started like well drying the, the and water and things but one thing that's just a shade away from sugar which is like refined grains right yeah so so it's funny because we, we take these things for granted it's like but how can i avoid sugar it's like right and it is hard. Everything that you buy at a store nowadays. Right. So that's why we it. need. That's why we need a system. <laughs> right. Uh, when I walk through the grocery store, I, I, I will go down entire aisles and say, like, there's not a single thing on this aisle right. that I feel good about putting in my body. Right. I want to put it in my body, <laughs> but there's. And then I go down another aisle. You know, there, like n nine out of ten aisles in a grocery store, there's not a single thing in that aisle that is like along the lines of what we're talking about. I felt that way at the sex shop the other day. So uh, I try to reduce, I try to buy pro animal, pro environmental sources as best I can, like Mashiko and Great State Burgers. And I also try to vote for uh, overall system change and you know try to promote that idea and that sort of thing. And that would, in my hope, and I'm guessing one day it'll have to happen anyway because of uh, population growth and, and environmental problems, um, that we will change, we will move away from beef. Like, you know, 100 years from now, I'm guessing just by necessity and, and hopefully by policy, uh, we'll either have extremely limited cattle um, on the planet, if any, honestly. And... You know, it's it as an as like a red blooded American, it feels weird, but the, all you got to do is just slowly change culture and preferences, yeah. and, you know, and people people will change the way they think about things. Like, uh, you know, the thing that people always talk about is lobster used to be considered like a poor person's um, meal, yeah, because it was like it looked like an insect, and it's from the gross part of the Hudson Bay, right? And it's you know it's readily abundant, and it's what like poor fisher people gross, you know, rich people wouldn't be caught dead eating a, a <laughs> lobster now. Totally different, right? Why? Because it's hard to get now because yeah, because there we we over farmed them, and so it's it's hard to get, and yeah. so so eventually like cattle will be associated hopefully with like tremendous waste and tremendous uh sure. bad health effects or hopefully not yeah sure. <laughs> and, well i'm guessing it will because it because right now in the united states we have less beef consumption and i think i think a big part of it is that there's another related controversial topic which we can talk to about some other time which is uh should we be trying to control population growth uh okay 
we should talk about that another time. So what's the final word on this, Berto? Like, uh, so, you know, uh, Alexis, I think, Alexis is like, why do we hate on vegans so much? Which yeah. we kind of already answered, but I think non vegans are definitely inferior and should be ashamed of themselves. That's the conclusion. Well, that does it for that episode of psychology in Seattle. Thanks for joining us out there. Let us know what you think. Uh, I, again, I don't want to hear about your health uh, tips. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to, well, actually, and da, 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 da. if you want to share your experience, I love that. You want to be like, Hey, this is what I found to be great. Or I like this or da, 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 da. But what I don't want to hear is um, like, uh, I saw a video that, you know, changed my life. And therefore anyone who eats chickens is a terrible, immoral person without any fucking empathy. Like, do you know what I mean? I hear you. <laughs> I'm I I I am more tolerant of that as long as it's not You're offensive. Tolerant because or... you don't have to read it. Oh you know, no, wait, but wait I'm saying until your t- Twitter account blows up, then you'll then you'll sure. know what I have to do. But I'm with. saying even like like I was saying, I follow a lot of YouTube channels. When I'm reading through those, there are a lot of people that rat hole on their little piece but of knowledge. But, but I just skip but, over. But that they're stuff. rat holing on someone else. They're not saying, you sure. know. I was just telling you earlier. Yeah. Someone was listening to my episode with Paulette in which I was talking about therapists who are attracted to their clients. Mm -hmm. And I was saying in the episode that I don't have, um, for whatever reason, I don't, I'm, when I hear other people describe their Their, struggles with being attracted to their clients, it's never resonated with me. I'm always like, huh, that's never happened to me. Right. Like I've never had a moment where I was like, Ooh, like, this I'm doesn't. To, yeah. This doesn't feel good. Like I, I, I gotta manage this somehow. I've never had that. Right. Um, I guess I've had passing notions like, oh, this person I bet is found attractive by people. Yeah. You know. But it's like I'm at work and this is a client and I'm here yeah. to care for them. I'm not here to date. You know. But anyway, lots of people have those feelings. Totally normal. Yeah. So I shouldn't have even said that because I was basically denigrating that whole thing. But anyway, and this person on YouTube is like, um. Dr. Kirk, you know, uh, you say that you don't have that, but, uh, you know, and then you went on to say that uh, you just, uh, d- you, you direct your sexual energy towards other people that are more appropriate in your life. Well, uh, one, that's totally stupid. And two, um, you're basically cheating on your partner because of mm-hmm. someone, someone on YouTube basically said, I'm cheating. On your partner because you 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 focus your sexual energy on your partner, yeah, and not on your clients. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, <laughs> think about the irony there. So I c- c- because and the thing is is I have to read the paragraph of words to get there. Do you know? Like, yeah, but that's a totally different. Like what you're saying there, I totally understand why that is annoying and you don't want it. I, and yeah. I'm, and the way I'm characterizing the comments, I don't want to get to this episode. Uh-huh. I can't even conceive of how horrible some of the comments will be toned. Do sure. you know what I mean? And the and the connections. Sure. Read a fucking book, Doctor yeah, Kirk. Yeah. And I'm with you on that. I just meant like if someone's like, well, like one of your examples was like, well, I watched this one YouTube video, and here's my conclusions. I think that's fine. But for me, I mean, I'm like, that's fine. But if it's like, I watched this one YouTube video and, and I'm you're convinced stupid. that everyone's stupid and you're, yeah. Well, exactly. and you're stupid yeah, is, yeah, what, yeah. is what they do. I and hear, and frankly, you. they call you stupid too sometimes. Well, I'm sure they do. And I don't send you those comments. You should. Well. <laughs> Share the wealth. Fine. But the point is, is like, <laughs> I want to be engaged with the community. Yeah. Because that's a big part of it for me. Yes. And if that's going to happen, then I need people to fucking be mature and respect each other. Right. And by all means, state your opinion, but do it as if you were standing right in front of me. Cause I'm, I'm positive that these people on YouTube, if they were standing right in front of me, they would not say those words. They right. would, they would phrase it differently. They would, they would, we would have a, a smile or two back and forth or yeah. something, you know, like the stuff that people say on YouTube is just like, I, every time I open up, a comment on YouTube, I have a, a, a slight traumatic reaction. That's what I'm talking about. And sure. then, and I'm basically like, and then I remind myself very quickly, Kirk, do not think that this, that this comment is going to go well. And so <laughs> I just want people to know, like, like think about your words, you know, right. like if you want to interact, like I'm a human being. Right. And th- so the consequence if, if I don't try to engineer the comments this way, basically what ends up happening is 
I'll get to a point where I just won't interact with people anymore. Sure. I'll just be like, okay, fine. I'm done. Like, cause, and there, cause there's whole swaths of the internet that I avoid for a yeah. reason, you know what I mean? Right. And so, you know, I'll avoid my own comment section, you know, it's just <laughs> like, because I don't, it, it'll literally well, so, ruin my day. So you know? some, some, some of the YouTubers that I know have to do that actively. Like Anna Kasparian from the Young Turks, she's talked about how if she goes in the comment sections, a lot of times it's like really aggressive, horrible stuff, like including things like you need to be raped and you need to, you know, all these kinds of things. Yeah, I get stuff like that yeah, too, by the yeah, way, yeah. not nearly as much yeah. as she does. Well, we're I'm not sure, women, but... so it's a little So different. it's different, yeah. but it's, it's, you know, it can get aggressive for yeah. sure. Um, and so, yeah, you know, so if, so this is my way of pleading with people, like, let me stay engaged with you. Yeah. And, and I know that many people on YouTube are nice and I'm sure Sunny Pie and, and others will say like, Oh, Kirk, we're sorry about YouTube. Well, and, and actually, sadly, I think a lot of the nice ones don't, don't necessarily comment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Because we get a lot of uh, thumbs up. Yeah. Like the majority, like, you know, the things we talk about, it's yeah. not like people are going to thumbs down it. Uh, yeah. I guess. Anyway, the point no, is, I've just, seen videos that only a monster with thumbs down and they have like 50 thumbs down. Yeah. I mean, they have like thousands of thumbs up, but they still have like 50. Yeah. Thumbs down. <laughs> well, like our episode where we talked about Columbia, right? We have thumbs downs, right? Like, and what? it's like, what? <laughs> why? Yeah. Well, that, I made a comment in one of them. It's like, at least tell me why. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what are you upset about? Like, yeah. we started off the, the episode saying, we're not going to talk about psychology. Right. And we're going to talk about our experiences in Colombia. Right. And that's what we fucking did. Right. So, and we didn't touch on anything controversial. Like, and we didn't, like, if you wait till the end, we got a big surprise for you. No. <laughs> in fact, we talked about psychological things in that episode. Yeah. But I didn't want to give anyone the expectation because, you know, anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then people give it a thumbs down. It's like... It's like, 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 okay, so I can relate slightly but not fully to some people that listen to things they don't like and continue to do so and then actively dislike them and actively comment. Because there's this channel that is a, this person, Jimmy Dore, who is quote unquote a progressive. Right. But I I no longer like him. I no longer like what he, what he says, what he spouts. Well, because you're, one, you're looking to fight with someone and yeah. you feel like you want to participate yeah. in that fight, yeah. which might be a good or bad thing. Yeah. And two, you might like, I've watched Alex Jones on the fucking internet. Yeah, like right. I have, I've from the minute I first heard of him, I was like, I have no interest in this guy, but I feel like I need to know what he's yeah, doing, right, right, right. you know, anyway. So that All does right. it for that episode of psychology <laughs> in Seattle in which we talk about veganism. And then I complain like a, <laughs> Like a little baby. And by the way, if you were a vegan, you wouldn't complain so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Please take care of yourself because you deserve it. Mm -hmm.